Are you interested in Oops. <laughs> Are you interested in understanding GOP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, or Manjaro? Then join us on the plus side, Cracking the Obesity Code, the groundbreaking podcast helping people change their lives one episode at a time. The Plus Sides podcast is a disruptor. We're breaking down barriers, smashing stereotypes, and sharing inspiring stories that'll leave you feeling informed and empowered. Join us every week to learn from doctors who are specialists around GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Bogovia, and Manjaro. They'll provide you with science and facts to validate these incredible stories. But that's not all. We'll also bring you the voices of the GLP-1 Manjaro TikTok community, real people who face the challenges of obesity related diseases and disorders and discovered the incredible plus sides of GLP-1 medications. Our episodes are filled with heartwarming stories, laughter, and moments of triumph. You'll connect with our amazing community members who are reclaiming their health and experiencing their fullest lives. Are you ready to embark on a journey of discovery and empowerment? Tune in to the plus sides cracking the obesity code and together we'll change the narrative around obesity and end the stigma. Subscribe now on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform platform and join our incredible community. Let's celebrate the plus sides of life together because every story deserves to be heard. Every life deserves to shine and everyone deserves access to expert knowledge and medication. The Plus Sides Podcast. You're not alone. It's not your fault. Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay. Hi, Hi friends. Kimmy, you're muted, love. <laughs> Even my welcome, welcome didn't happen. One more time. Welcome, welcome. Hi, <laughs> yes. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I had to be quiet because the child was putting up the dogs and he like wrangles them. Like that's the way awesome. he is. Like, and it's so wrangles them. Wrangles them. <laughs> and he like, because he's small and like, so he's always like, it feels like I have a big voice. And then he's, it's just very loud. And it was like right in the middle of all the things. So. <laughs> I just, it's okay, it's okay. okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Happy Wednesday. The whole team. Well, the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> I found my microphone cover. Oh, goodness. Yeah. It, I, oh. Yeah, I break things today. <laughs> I break things too. My, I, I bet before long this light's going to fall right on my mm -hmm. head. I haven't figured out how to like balance it just yet. It's fine. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Anyway, so cool. So we will likely be here a minute because this is going to be our community roundtable like we did for the last um, Oprah episode where she talked about GLP-1s for the first time. So now we have another one. And it was a doozy. <laughs> it was a doozy. And um, the fact that she has left Weight Watchers, of course, was like Christmas to me. <laughs> we all know how I feel about it. We want to say it louder. Huh? Is that okay. Yes. I'm being egged on. Oh, do it again. There we go. Hump day. There we go. <laughs> there it is. I'm gonna have some caffeine now. Mm -hmm. uh, right. What's important, I think, when stuff like this happens, and what was important last time, is to share different perspectives. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff runs really deep with us, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that we had a panel that was diverse, and um, we could really consider different people's, you know, point of view and past and opinions yeah so that's what we're gonna do again today so um you're gonna see some familiar faces so how about we go ahead and invite on our panel sounds good excited let's do it here it comes hey we got we got the 2k team tonight i love yeah, it yeah man look at this we got everybody. <laughs> we do. Yes. So I just thought like in terms of where you want in your journey, you know, your backgrounds and everything like that you would just really represent really well. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much for coming on. And yeah. what we're going to do is bring up different clips from the episode and then kind of round table, discuss it. And let's just all try to be respectful and kind. Like we try to on here and listen and, you know, try to consider other people's perspectives too, because it helps, you know, yeah. we've learned a lot doing this. I think that's kind of what this show is all about, right? Is that we learn, Absolutely. you know, and then we grow and then we heal and it's, it's really important. So that's right. let's try. Um, 
I think let's go ahead and queue it up. What do you think, Producer Kat? You ready to play it? You ready to play the well, first clip? Community, don't forget to tag in. If you got feelings about someone. We that want to is right. It. Please do. We want to hear from you. We do. Oh, yeah. It's so important. You're part of this too. Mm, awesome. Yes. Yes. All right. I agree. I agree. Yes. I agree. All right. So let's start with the first one. Y'all ready? So party started. Let it go. Let's let it rip. Woohoo. Um, 17% of patients discontinued medication because of side effects. Now, the vast majority of which were gastrointestinal. And we asked Dr. Jennifer Ashton, chief medical correspondent for ABC News, to share her expertise on the side effects. She is board certified in obesity medicine, a practicing OBGYN, has a master's degree in nutrition. Here's Dr. Jen. Oprah, I'm so glad we're talking about this. Let me give you some historical context and perspective on this class of medication, the GLP-1 agonist. People often don't realize that these were first FDA approved in the United States for help in managing type 2 diabetes almost 20 years ago. So we have extensive safety and efficacy data. They have a good track record. However, when you talk about risks, I think you need to ask four questions. What are the risks of taking these drugs versus what are the risks of not taking these drugs? What are the benefits of taking these drugs? And what are the benefits of not taking these drugs? We know conclusively that if you do not treat or manage the conditions of overweight or obesity, the risks are significant. Increased risks of heart attack, stroke, various types of cancer. That has to be part of this decision-making analysis. So take a very rare potential risk or side effect of this class of medication. But if a risk is noted to occur one out of every 100,000 times, that's rare, that's one case. But if all of a sudden, a million people are on that drug, you're going to see that rare risk or side effect 10 times. What I tell patients is if you had high blood pressure, if you had high cholesterol, if you had depression, you would treat it. It is conclusively known that the conditions of overweight and obesity are complex chronic disease states, not character flaws, Oprah. So they should be managed accordingly. Oh, I love that so much, Dr. Jin. Thank you. It's a disease, not a character flaw. So, Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> oh, come with it, okay? <laughs> yes. yes, yes. It's really hard for me to like see her and say these things because okay. back when we all got here, so like you guys all know we're working on a documentary about the birth of the movement, right? But right when we were all were starting to create in summer of last year. So I started creating, mm -hmm. an, not last year, before that. So I started creating GLP content in October, um, but I started taking the medicine in July of 2022. Wow. And when that was happening, there the news was vilifying us. Mm -hmm. And she was too. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard for me to hear her talk this way now because it's just, a, it's representative of the fact that everybody's got a boss. Do you know what I mean? And right. it wasn't until Weight Watchers got in the game and the GLB game before everything just flipped around just like that. Because mm -hmm. I remember very, very, that this particular doctor who's an obesity specialist specifically listed Ozempic face as a side effect mm -hmm. on one of the spots as a side effect. And I was so upset by it, but let me tell you the minute they announced that Weight Watchers had bought sequence, everything changed for that show. Everything changed. So it's very hard for me to believe anything she says. <laughs> Not my opinion. <laughs> what do you think? Well, to, be fair, to be fair, like we've seen a lot of people like kind of change their minds. Like we have big champions in the community that are like providers that felt differently about different aspects yeah. of DLP medication compound being one of them, um, people not being on them that were trying to only lose 25 or 30 pounds. People feel a lot different about a lot of aspects of, about these medications. So I think, I mean, Oprah's a human too. She's allowed to change her mind. You know, yeah. she's allowed to feel differently. And maybe the reason she feels differently is because she went on the medication and now she gets it. Maybe that's part yeah. of it. Oh, right? no. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Okay. I meant the doctor. Yeah. Oh, you meant Jen Ashton. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I meant the doctor. Oh. Girl, you know I forgive Oprah anything. <laughs> okay. Good Lord. <laughs> <No way. laughs> I forgive her anything. Um, but that's me. Um, but yeah, so I think like I'm I'm curious what y'all think. I mean, I'm I'm excited that Oprah's mm -hmm. come around and hallelujah seen it and GOP one evangelist now. 
There yeah. she really is. She's one of us. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. but I'm curious, like, what about you, Tiffany? What do you think? One I love, um, Dr. Jen. I watch her all the time on GMA three, all of the above. Yeah. Um, and so when she was talking though, I and I was trying to remember too when you were talking about what she was saying before, and mm -hmm. I feel like I've heard a few things, mm -hmm. um, but not a lot. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, you know, when when she called her name, I was like, that's my girl. Like I know that she is going to go to bat for us because she is an um an obesity specialist mm -hmm. and. Um, if that was the case, though, I do agree with um, Lydia, though. I mean, people definitely can change. We have to allow them to be able to change. Um, now, I was a little bit surprised knowing that she is a um, an obesity specialist and she should have already known about this kind of like she had the inside scoop. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're I would think that your thoughts would be would already be different. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the only thing that kind of surprises me about it. But I mean, I felt really good with her statement. Um, mm -hmm. because even I say that as well, like if I had to choose, like going down the same road that I was going down, high cholesterol. I mean, people talk about high blood pressure, things like that in relation to, you know, trying to take the meds and not have any of that. Yeah. Just be good. Like I, I'm with it. I'm with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's I mean, I, I totally get your perspective. And I do think, like you said, we have seen a lot of people change. And this is a movement, right? And a lot of times with movements, it's about hearing more and more and more positions and perspectives, you. you know, and also it can be a little, oh, thank you for your membership. But it can also be a little mob mentality sometimes. I think we see it on TikTok. We see it in the news yeah. we see it in this country. You know, yeah. where it's like if everybody is, oh, look, Tiffany. <laughs> look who it is. Look okay. who it is. <laughs> it's your favorite. Oh, yeah. goodness. Um, but I think, you know, it's it's a good point, you know. I th But it's like you said, it was because she's a doctor. But I just think that everybody has, I just think everybody has a boss. And yeah. I got oh, always yeah. felt like there was just like puppets and strings when it comes to the media, you the know. Proof is in the pudding. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. it's also a bigger thing where the it's not your fault, um, you know, it's not about willpower. That didn't reach the mainstream until these drugs came out and they had mm -hmm. big drug companies that have millions of dollars of budgets to say, put mm -hmm. this message out there now because it was all, diets make money off of, it's your fault. And now there's something that's not your fault that they can make money off of. So that's kind of my, my cynical perspective. <laughs> I mean, again, better late than never that this message mm -hmm. is out there, but yeah. it took having something to sell for people to be people to be like, Oh yeah, maybe, you know, maybe this isn't just people being lazy, you know, yeah. it's frustrating in a way. Yeah. It yeah. is frustrating. That's how I feel when I hear her speak at all is I feel frustrated mm -hmm. because I know how many spots that she was a part of where, but again, like I know she can only say what she can, can what she can say. She's yeah. got a job, you know? And I mean, that's the thing. Um, but yeah. What about you, Kim? What'd you think? For <laughs> It is frustrating to see someone like her, like just 180 on that whole thing, because, you know, a year ago I had people being like, why are you taking these medications and stuff? Like the people that I care about in my life, you know, they're supportive, but I had folks being like, well, why are you taking this? Why are you doing that? I mean, just go get weight loss surgery. And I'm like, first of all, I can't because, but I was, I, I started approaching it from very much from a mental health perspective for me. And that's something that I feel like is missing from the conversation and needs to be talked about more because it's not as simple as calories in, calories out. Mm -hmm. And with the media flip on GLP-1 medications now, it's people are starting to open up that maybe there's more to the story than just, they can't put the fork down. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's more to the story than just, oh, they're not exercising enough. You know, yeah. Maybe this is a physical issue. Maybe it's a mental health issue. Let's start looking at it from all perspectives. And I'm, I mean, while I'm glad that the conversation is changing and progressing, it's it's so frustrating that it took, like, like Nick said, that it took a company having to sell a product before we got to that point. It took mm -hmm. having someone as powerful as Oprah to say, yeah, I'm on a Zempic, you know, for people to be like, well, sure. I guess it's not too bad, you know? Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's America. Like, you know, 
Uh, it's so funny because I I'm such a brat. I was like when she was like, "We're starting the conversation." I'm like, "Lady, we've been talking about this for 18 months." Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. yeah. I love you, Oprah. Where are you being? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but you're not starting. You the have a whole podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I was on Ozempic in 2021. Okay. Right. I remember people being on the drug before that. Yeah. But I'm glad you're with us now. <laughs> you right. know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I'm still walking here. Mm -hmm. We're glad everybody's with us. Okay, yeah. that's a whole yeah, nother. That's a whole nother we thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and Rhea actually made a good point that I thought of too. Is why do people immediately like Kim? I'm so sorry that people just jumped and said, "Oh, you should just go get surgery." Why do people think it's normal to go alter your body rather than to try a medication first? Like why? Yeah. Why is like that a, a like a real quick outpatient procedure? Like yeah, how did that become a normal thing? Hey, let's make your stomach as big as a banana peel before yeah. you try a, a medication because it's scary. It's an injection. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Yeah. And What's Lydia, that's the crazy part though. with the medication though, because people are like, oh, it's gonna it's gonna par paralyze your stomach and I'm like, and what do you think? Yep. Lap bands and gastric bypass. Right. What do you think those? Right. Are? That, exactly. that there's also complications and risk with those. And I'm not even a candidate because of my ED. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. What and I feel like that's the crazy part, though, because there's so many people that say that it's OK. But then there's like 10 times the people that say it's not OK. So I'm like, mm -hmm. what do you really do? Like, what is really going to be OK? I yeah, don't feel like what? anything. Nine yeah. times out of ten, those people are people that have never walked in our shoes. Those people yeah. are people that can eat whatever they want and they have a normal body and they've never had to deal with sitting at a holiday table and going, oh, well, I better not put as much food on my plate as my brain really wants because then what does that look like to other people? What is that going to do to my body? How is that going to affect mm -hmm. my life? How, You know, like yeah. they've never lived in that body before, so they don't get it. Yes. They just don't. Yeah. <laughs> they know, don't, but, totally but now totally. because of the Oprah effect mm -hmm. now. And, and and I'm pretty sure we can all, all of us that are here on the panel and probably many of us, you know, out in the chat can attest to after that special aired, inboxes were flooded, questions, comments on TikTok post. And it was just like, the interest was peaked, but it wasn't just the interest. I, and I'm not sure if anyone agrees with this, but people are now talking about openly like white knuckling it and how hard it is. Yeah. And, and they never maybe used to say white knuckling, but now people are starting to talk about it and being more vocal. And if anyone tries to body shame or shame, you know, the GLP-1 community is like the cavalry. We are headed yeah. to that post. And we're like, oh, no, we you right don't. Right dawn, lunchtime, midnight, it don't matter. Yeah, okay. That's that's it. It. It's in the it's new West. It's in the New West. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I am thankful that, you know, Oprah had an epiphany. And mm -hmm. at least she's saying, and I can understand. At first, I didn't understand why she wouldn't say which medication she was using. But mm -hmm. I think if she did, it would, I mean, could you imagine if, if she did say she was on my oh drug? be on the one that Oprah is on. Yes. And yeah. it's already a shortage. Going. Could you yeah. imagine? And then people will be like, well, I want to be on the one Oprah's on. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Me too. Get the other one. Yep. You can go into their doctor with Oprah's favorite things list. Be like, yeah. I want this. I want right. this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll come yeah, out yeah. with a Stanley. One of these Stanley. She'll come out with a Stanley, right? My favorite I favorite one. I feel now like let her stay on Zimpic because I don't want any more Manjaro shortages. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Go ahead yeah. and stay yeah. on Zimpic. That's right. No more shortages. Right. Right. Oprah, anything. if you're listening, we already told you what you want, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know. We can kind of tell, but I mean, you know, at at least Oprah's talking about it. And yeah. I'm and I don't know if she is, I don't know if she isn't, but you y'all know I love Kelly Clarkson. She can mm -hmm. sing coffee to me. But she, but she's not saying one word. I think that's okay though. Like I, I think it's okay, that. but yeah. it's about yeah. health. I think it's that people about health, you know. But I think that people are kind of like sometimes dragging Oprah because yeah. she's not saying enough. But mm -hmm. at least she's saying something. Yeah. 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 To your point, there's a plenty of other celebrities that we all know are on it, and they're not speaking up either. Yeah. At least Oprah's saying, "I'm saying, 
okay, yeah, I am on a medication. Like, I'm not saying which, but I am. I'm using yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. But yeah. the fact that some are staying silent too also is like, this is something that I have to be ashamed of and I have to keep, yes. you know, that's the message that yeah. it sends to me. And yeah. yes, like I do also understand the other part of the argument, which is this is your, you know, this is your health. This is your medical history. Yes. You don't owe that to anyone. But yeah. still, it's like why it still can, it contributes to the shame of it just to be yeah. like, oh, I can't tell people about that because it's somehow wrong. Yeah. I, I'm very unlikely about it. I'm very on the fence about it. I think that, um, you know, I understand what you're saying, Nick. I completely understand that. But I think that, um, I think it's important that people share what they're comfortable with sharing, right? Like, just because mm -hmm. you're a celebrity doesn't mean, doesn't entitle, like, we're not entitled to the, like, who's on blood pressure medication or who's on this or who's on that, right? Like, this is, I think that they should share what they're comfortable with at the end of the day. Well, yeah. and like to that yeah. point, like they, their, their whole families, all their families may know that they're on it. They just don't come out in public. Right. Mm -hmm. And like the best analogy is like, we have plenty of people in the community. Like we're all out here. We're all sharing all of our stuff. Right. But there's plenty of people in the community that don't make content. They don't feel comfortable like putting all their mm -hmm. stuff out all the time. So, I mean, to Sabrina's point, that's, I don't know, that's kind of a, the I same. Think most of our community guys. I mean, we have people, we have hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people that are in the communities, many people who have no idea what this show is or who I am or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything about this. Like I have randomly met people and they're like, they've been on this medicine two years. I'm like, what, what, you have a show? Right. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, kind of, a, it's a thing, yeah. you know, like, and it's and it's, it's, it's amazing how many people are out there. But my point is those people aren't all creating. Right, most yeah. people aren't creating. We're creators, yeah. but many people aren't sharing their story for yeah. lots of different reasons. You know, well, with the celebrity factor, like they're they're going to deal with a lot more than we're dealing with just from sharing on TikTok, right? Yeah, for They've sure. Got the press coming at them, and like, you know, like think about, oh my God, think about if if somebody as famous as like Taylor Swift came out and said that they were on a GLP, right? Like, obviously yeah. Taylor Swift doesn't need it. Okay, don't get me wrong, don't misunderstand me, but. Like somebody that famous came out, they're gonna have the paparazzi crowding them on the sidewalk, going, "Which one are you taking? We want to know. Is it Manjaro or Gordon? You know, it's just right. something. Yeah, else. tell everybody so they can go get it. Yeah, yeah, right. it's just yeah. something else that people harass them about. So I mean, like, I don't know. They're like entitled to that decision. That they yeah. don't well, like, what's the one of the biggest questions you guys get on your lives? Right, which one's better? Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if somebody really respects you and you have are of influence in any way, and we know many people feel that way over Oprah, about Oprah, right? Mm -hmm. If you say like you're on Manjaro then that's what they're going to do. They're going to go, oh, that's the decision then, right? Because yeah. someone that they respect or or think highly of, right? And in some sort of way, mm -hmm. does it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. I think it's good. Well, um, is everybody okay to, to we have one, one thing that I wanted to mention when you guys talked about Kelly Clarkson, and this is why I love her so much. Love when it. she put on <clears throat> her baby weight, she was very defiant about it. She refused to talk about it. She told the press to F off, mind your freaking business. And so it doesn't. It didn't surprise me that she's not going to come out and say that she's on a GLP one because yeah. she's amazing. I mean, let's all agree yeah. though. It would be great she if like she had Oprah on her show and they like they talked about it because like she's very like down to earth on her show. Like that would be mm -hmm. amazing. I went home with a massive. Yeah, she said like I I, went, <laughs> I, had, I had a baby. We gained weight. F you, yeah. and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that should be enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this whole idea that you should bounce back right after having a baby. Like I've never had a baby before, but mm -hmm. it's, it's such a weird expectation because like I've known people who have had children and literally are ha being handed pamphlets of like, you know, well, you know, if you walk with your baby more often, they'll help shed those baby weight pounds oh, yeah. a little bit faster. Go, like, stroller. Yeah. go running, dude. What? <laughs> Somebody tried that with a friend of mine after she had a C-section and she was like, look, I left the hospital and my doctor said, I can't even grab a gallon of milk. I can't even pick up my baby. And yeah. you want me to do what? Like yeah. that, yeah. that doesn't happen. That can't yeah. happen. That would be detrimental to my health. Like, I don't know. People... Yeah. The, the moral failing thing has to like go out the window. It's yeah. not a moral, We've got to flush it down. Yeah. Moral yeah. 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 Speaking of, let's go to the next clip. All right, let's do it. Okay. I remember back in, you know, the late eighties, early nineties of the Oprah show, when we were talking about with experts, the idea of alcoholism being a disease. We had people saying mean things like, just put the bottle down. 
There's no such thing as alcoholism being a disease. Now, of course, we know differently. Alcoholism is a disease for many people. It is not a disease for everybody who is uh, who drinks too much. And so I see this as the same, that many people have the disease of obesity. Everybody who is overweight does not have the disease of obesity. But if you have the disease of obesity, you're always going to go back to that set point. If you don't have it, then you can diet, lose weight, exercise, all of the things that we've heard over the years. Is, 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 am I yeah, on the right track here? Absolutely. Are you all following this? Because if you all are tracking, it means the rest of the world will track. But there's a spectrum of obesity as well. It's not one disease. It's many different subtypes of a disease. So it's complex. Quite complex. And that's why it is so wrong to be shaming people because you don't understand the complexity of each person's situation. Yeah. And, this, and I think, as, as Amy said, this is just a reflection of someone's uneducated uh, belief that this is just a self-inflicted condition, as if people who want to be, who have obesity actually want to have obesity. It's looked at, these are weaker people who have no willpower, yeah. who can't cut it. That's right. And people who are thin can cut it. So let's talk about... Wow. Wow. I want to say that I have met the strongest human beings I have ever known in my entire life in this community. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this community is a very, very strong individual. And uh -huh. there is nobody that's in this community that hasn't tried all the things already. Right. Yeah. They we have all every I'm sure that every single person on this panel has white knuckled it at some point, has tried to. Oh, yeah kill it at the gym, for lack of a better word, has mm -hmm. tried to starve themselves into being thinner than they were. We've all tried those things, right? We've Many all been yeah. we yeah. it, right? We had to be pretty damn strong to live through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. I'll shut up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Agreed. For me, I, I was trying to like compare the analogy when, when people would say, just stop eating or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Okay, yeah, but here's the problem with food addiction. You're around it constantly. Mm -hmm. You don't need alcohol to survive. You don't need opioids to live your everyday life. You need to eat, though. Mm -hmm. Like when I was telling my mom, you know, before I left her tonight, I said, you know, make sure you eat the rest of those tacos. And she's like, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm like, you need to eat. And I, 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 I get that what we put in our bodies is important is how much we put in our bodies, but... <laughs> idea that you could just put the fork down like again we're not looking at it as a disease we weren't before now we are thankfully and more people really need to get that through their thick skull they were willing to accept, accept alcoholism opioid addiction um gaming addiction uh you know sex addiction, Shopping addiction. you know right. all, all the things that are are now considered you know addictions in the dsm dsm4 but food addiction still is kind of looked at, mm, mm, I mean, I mean, it's just, oh, shut up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, shut up already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the other yeah. thing about food addiction, and I'm not an addiction specialist, I'm not a doctor at all, but um, what... <laughs> But like, I, I feel like when we're talking about addiction, as I understand it, it's mostly just the dopamine circuit in the brain. It's the pleasure. Mm -hmm. And this affects hormones and GLP-1 and leptin and ghrelin. And it's, it's a whole, like, maybe there is this other, you know, component to addiction that I'm not understanding, yeah. but it feels when, you know, I feel like, you know, food addiction in the past has been a way to stigmatize people in like, well, you just have food addiction. But I think there's more going on in the body than just addiction. Um, mm -hmm. And again, not speaking from a scientific perspective, but it just feels like with what we know now, it's not just a pleasure thing in the brain. And that was what's so interesting about that CNN study that came out last year where they fed the nutrients into their stomachs through feeding tubes. They didn't have the pleasure from the food. Does everyone know about that study? No, tell us about it. No. So, yeah. It was actually, this is kind of brilliant. So what they did is they put, um, you know, quote, unquote, normal weight people in um, MRI scanners and they put obese people in. And while they're in, they fed nutrients through a feeding tube down into mm -hmm. their stomachs. So they did carbohydrates, probably good sugar and uh, proteins. 
And they noticed that the people who were thinner had activation in certain brain areas, but the people who were obese did not, which they, you know, kind of hypothesized meant that the signals just aren't reaching the brain. And I guess the point that I was trying to make was they bypassed the whole pleasure thing by feeding it through the feeding tube. It's not like, oh, here, eat this. It's uh -huh. going to taste good. They bypass that by going directly into the stomach. So it's not just a pleasure thing. Wow. Well, Nick, for, I'm going to say in my experience with Ozempic and now, especially Manjaro, particularly with Manjaro, when I first went on it, after a couple of weeks, I noticed that I wasn't obsessing anymore. I noticed that I wasn't going, I need to have the chips now. I need, like, I'm hungry a little bit, but I need to eat something right now. Like, I wasn't <laughs> fiending like a, a, like a freak, you know, I was, yes. I was calm. Every, and then I realized when I saw something on TikTok, they, saw, they talked about food noise. And I was like, oh, my God. That's what that this was. This is what I've been dealing with That's my it. entire life. Yeah. And the medication, it quieted it. And there were certain foods that I used to love that were hitting the do the dopamine receptors in my brain and then stopped when 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 I started taking Manjaro. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. while there's it sucks that there's some things I can't really eat and enjoy anymore, it feels good knowing that I'm not a prisoner to the plate anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. So to the plate. Real quick, I love that alliteration. Mm, a prisoner Ooh. to the plate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Liver. Yeah. I just came up with yeah. that. Like, I literally just feel like an evangelist. Well, that was me. No. Mm. Hey. Well, I capitalize on Nick's point, too. Like, for instance, like, I have PCOS. So, like, my brain was constantly like, you're hungry, lady. Keep eating. Just keep filling it in, right? I didn't have yep. that switch that was like, okay, you're full stop. Right, my brain. Did. So, from the outside perspective, that probably did look like an addiction for the food, right? But really, it was just my brain telling me, "No, no, no, you're still hungry. Keep going." You know, yeah. my my Keep brain going. and hormones were kind of betraying me. I wasn't addicted to anything. I just, you know, my body was like fighting against me, basically. Yeah. So, anyway. I would just I think, get hangry. Hangry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody gets hangry. I don't care what body you're in. <laughs> yeah, I still get hangry on my yeah. job. I still get hangry. I work with all of you. I know you do. There are two times I'm tired or hungry, and if I'm both, just get out of my way. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I think sometimes I know that I've mentioned this before. The last couple of weeks, it's definitely starting to to happen more. Um, you know, everybody knows I, I went to Overeaters Anonymous because compulsive overeating. And then we use the 12 steps just like an alcohol, an alcoholics anonymous, narcotics anonymous. And I still, for me, um, I hit a wall, but I still sometimes, I remember using food to numb out. I don't know if anybody else in this panel had done that, but uh, completely shut off and eat the feels. I didn't realize how much I was, how much emotion I was eating until I started mm -hmm. taking the drugs. But sometimes she tries yeah. to kick back in sometimes like, Oh, you're feeling kind of upset. Let's um, what's in the house. And I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like and the drug right. does the little, Hey, we're not. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Well, um, I, I'm only talking with Takashi and I've had this discussion a lot. Um, but yeah, um, I think that like that I will have, I'll tell you I have the same sort of thing, but I have, of like obsessive anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and I turned off like a switch for me with these medicines. And then, mm -hmm. but I still have times where I go through stress and my environment changes and I feel it kick back up. But here's the difference. My brain goes, what just happened there? Like it mm -hmm. switches and we're like, hmm, what are we going to do about this? Is there anything <laughs> that we can actually do about this? Where I really can't. Mm -hmm. It's like you used to say, you get snacky and then you yep. go start eating before bed and you go, it's the same thing. It's about being able to gear shift and being in control. Oh, yeah, way, yep. Right. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's always been the thing for me is I am fine with my choices, but they have to be mine. Mm -hmm. And I never felt like they were mine. Yes. It always felt like I couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. And as yeah. long as this, if, like, I'm telling you, I had some cheesecake today. It was a gluten-free cheesecake. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was full of protein. I know it's crazy. <laughs> I made a video. I made a video. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm going to try to get him a sponsor because they're awesome. They're gluten-free. They're high in protein, low in sugar. And I, I ate half of it and it was a little bitty thing. You know what I mean? But 
if I wanted to eat the whole thing, I'd have been okay with it because it was my choice. But I didn't mm-hmm. want to, right? That's and right. and y'all, it's shot day. I could have put it away. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't, you know, because you know how it's on shot day. You're ready to go. Let's do it. Yeah. Go. You know, it's like, I, I think that it's just, it's about being making your own choices like and that's how that's how it's always been for me i do remember the first time like i've heard people say food noise for for a while now but when i was first starting so july 2022 i heard one girl i don't even see anymore she goes you know i'm on this medicine and i think what i like most about it is the quiet and i went and it wasn't even like food noise it wasn't no one had coined it like it was nothing like that you know what i mean but it was just like, that's what it is. It's so that's what it is. Yeah. And yeah. then, and that was when I was early on. It wasn't until I got to three milligrams because I was on Saxenda, three mm-hmm. milligrams that it turned off like a switch. And I thought I had a stroke. So mm. it, if all of those things yeah. change by literally regulating hormones, mm-hmm. then how could it have been our fault? Mm. How? Right. How? Right. Yeah. right. Like, you to, like, yeah. You're taking all. A synthetic type, I'm oversimplifying, hormone, right? Mm -hmm. It's making your body regulate. And all of a sudden, all of the things you wanted to do and be, you can. It sticks. Mm -hmm. All those things stick. Because, you know, people say, you have to stick with it, right? Mm -hmm. Even that one thing on Dr. Stitch that was like, you're looking great, Oprah. You got to stick with it, right? You're not like, bite me, you know? (laughs) Like... (laughs) <laughs> it's possible to stick with it. That's what makes it never was possible before. It was just miserable. You know? Anybody I else? I, I just think, think it's so interesting though. Oh sorry, cut someone off, but I'm noticing like I didn't I didn't know that other people used the term white knuckling for a while. That was a, a term that I just used in my head. And then I heard other people using it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and you have talked about food noise, it gets quiet. Like yeah. these experiences are so universal. And look at like how we're all talking about how we feel when we're restricted. We're all grinning our, we're literally yeah. white knuckling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, it's so interesting how universal amongst people on these medications, they have these feelings that, you know, yeah, like just everyone has, you know, different words for it, but they're so similar. It's crazy. Oh, similar. Yeah. Yeah. I first heard it from JT and I didn't know what she was talking about at first. I was like, what is she mean? mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stole it for me. It wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I stole it for somebody else. <laughs> I can't remember where I heard it from. I mean, I heard it years ago because in I knew it was attributed to whatever. Like, if you're going through something, you're like trying to. Like, I actually I, I know now I know why where addiction. When people were talking about I'm white knuckling my way through quitting smoking, you know, I'm white knuckling mm-hmm. my way through quitting mm-hmm. booze, and I'm like. You right. really want to talk to somebody about that. It's going to get a little difficult, you know. <laughs> but yeah. what I was going to say earlier, Nick, I think that as the years go on, as science progresses, they're going to start treating obesity the same way they do with overactive and underactive thyroids. Yeah. The way they do with uh, 100%. You know, postpartum psychosis. You know, yeah. your hormones. Yeah. They're going to look at it from that perspective and say, maybe if we tweak the hormones a little bit more in the brain. Yeah. You know, not just with GLP one medications, but in other ways, like maybe we could help people not feel so trapped yeah. by their, you know, over reliance of food. Yeah, and mm-hmm. also maybe help them lose weight. We had this doctor on the show at the beginning of this season, Doctor uh, Mick Crotty, and he specifically said something that went viral, and we saw it everywhere. And he is a, a doctor from from Ireland. He's an, well, it's kind of, an, he's an obesity doctor. They don't have specialists in Ireland. And he said, he said, literally telling someone with obesity to like put the food down or stop eating or all those things is like telling someone with depression to cheer up, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which we now know is absurd. But 20 years ago, yeah, that's what people said. Yeah. Perfect. So I still hear the cheer up with my depression. Yeah. 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 Right? right, it's the same uh, thing people just can't conceive, right? It's crazy because depression usually comes with obesity, right? Like yeah. hand in hand. So right. yeah. just be happy and eat less. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, he yeah. also he also used the term. He also used the um the analogy of like telling an obese person to eat less is like telling an anorexic to fill up. Like it's yeah. telling mm-hmm. an anorexic. Ooh. It's ridiculous. Wow, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I should to touch on what uh. Kat was said earlier with the whole because I um I I was an alcoholic many years uh, years ago, and then with that um 
it, it is kind of related because when I stopped drinking, when I, you know, became sober, it all of that transferred over to food, right? Mm -hmm. Like that addiction mm -hmm. from yeah. alcohol transferred over to food. So it was like, I know what you're saying, what you were talking about, Kat, because it really hit home for me, you mm -hmm. know, like in regards to having to deal with and that the dopamine, just that the, it, it was literally a transfer of addiction. It, it was wild. So mm -hmm. I'm so, so thankful for the, the yeah. side. And it's, and then the whole, oh, just stop drinking, you know, or, or just stop, push away from the table. I mean, it's absurd. It's absurd, yeah. but it took so long, so many years. I mean, think about it 20, 30 years ago, uh, nobody thought alcohol was a disease, right? Like, like what you were yeah. just saying, and like nobody knew or thought that it was a disease. So it's, I'm very ha happy that we're finally shifting that. Do we way. know Slowly. what year? Does anybody know? Can anybody Google and find out what year did someone come out and say, Alcoholism is a disease because I feel like I was hearing it in college. Alcoholism was quite a bit in my well, family. Like early 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 Alcoholics Anonymous was like out in the 30s. Like that's yeah, but they didn't call it a disease. Like, like, like medical you know, professionals started talking yeah. about it being a yeah. disease in the early 90s. It was mm -hmm. the early the early 90s. So oh, when yeah, I was, they were treating uh, it with yeah. um, is it bupronia? It's contrave. Bupropion. I am terrible. That's all That's all Bupropion. But bupropion, they treat alcoholism with bupropion. So, um, yeah, Sabrina, what, you were, what you were saying, sorry, um, my husband's a mental health clinician. So he says he sees transfer addiction a lot, yeah. particularly with people who have had weight loss surgery because you can't sure. get the dopamine rush mm -hmm. of eating as much as you want. So then they find something else to you know turn to and a lot of them turn wow. to alcohol, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's sort of like when children are growing up and they're out of control, right? And for whatever reason, they feel out of control for something. The only thing that's close by for them is food. It's one thing they control because they're children. So mm -hmm. many children, like myself, right? Like not knowing how to handle big emotions. Well, I can eat them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know that's what I was doing, but I wanted to feel better. And it was the only thing yeah. I could have access to. So yep. I think that's like you kind of reach for what you can get, mm -hmm. you know? And, mm -hmm. I, and I was going to say, I thought I had read something sometime last year that said bariatric patients um, in terms of insurance and GLP ones, many times it's not easier, but it's maybe a smoother pathway to yes, insurance approval. If you've had bariatric surgery and now you're to be on a GLP one, uh, like, you know, try if you're prescribed a GLP one, that maybe there is a smoother pathway to insurance approval and coverage. Mm -hmm. If you're a bariatric surgery patient because of the mental aspect. Hmm. I've heard okay. some people, maybe that's new. I've heard some people say that because they regained from bariatric surgery, mm -hmm. they were re rejected from insurance. Yeah. I so, thought you were saying you thought that bariatric surgery itself was an easier path, which I oh. think in terms of insurance, it is. We're like, okay, you know, you go through like six months of counseling and then, all right, yeah, we'll do it. We'll give it a try. So I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's a massive pain in the butt, like the steps yeah. that you have to go through. Like, but, mm. but at the same time, you know, like when I was, when I, when I had mine, like they didn't, they didn't have, they were GLP, so this is in 2007. So they didn't have, um, th this wasn't like a common thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I mean, what was Vieta was in what, 2005. So, but that was, that was still for diabetics. They weren't talking about treating easier for obesity. Yeah. So yeah. for sure, like you had to go through the steps, but, and you don't have to take six months right now, which is why I think they added that whole diet plan in, right. To a lot mm -hmm. of these insurance companies as like criteria to get approval. It's a way to like stall. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what they're doing to prepare of for the course. surgery. Even that you'll of change course. your jobs or change whatever. Like it's just a stall mm -hmm. technique. You know, mm. I really oh, talked yeah. to a surgeon today about starting oh. patients on GLP-1 after to get better results. Yeah, I've, I've had plenty of surgeons like on the show that have mm -hmm. said that that's the best practice, that that's what they want to do. Dr. You know? Angelina says that, the, that a lot of her patients that do bariatric surgery, like with her husband and with the other doctors in her practice, mm -hmm. almost immediately, not even a month out, she wants them on at least a low dose of a GLP-1 to mm -hmm. help with the brain. Yeah. 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 It's because it's different. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. To get your definition, Kim, um, the American Medical Association classified alcoholism as a disease in 1956. Oh my wow. Right? Yeah. And really? in 87 classified oh. as addiction as a disease as well. 
So so in the eighties, in the eight, it really was. Wow. It was I swear, people only came around to this in the past ten years. Well, that then, people people are like, well, well, they take time. Wow. Think so about like cool. obesity considered as a disease. What twenty years ago, and people are just now coming around. Yeah, that right. Is that yeah. is. I don't know if I would say people are coming around. I. Right. I, mean, I think yeah. we're trying to get them to. I think that's right. what we're we're, getting we're there. dragging we're on around the corner. We're, we're dragging on around the, the corner. corner. Like, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, the corner. The corner. we're the tortoise. We're not the hare. We're getting there. Okay, <laughs> okay let's go. Let's the next clip. It's the tortoise. Uh, yes. It's okay. We need blue shirts. We're the tortoise crew. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bush, this disparity in the access, what, how do we fix this? Yeah. Complex, complex solutions need to be discussed because we're seeing an inequity at, 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 at the basic and simplistic most way is that people who actually need medications that are highly effective yeah. don't have a chance of getting them. And is that going to change in the future, do you think? Well, of course, people will point at the competitive, you know, new drugs will come out that will knock the prices down. But, you know, what we're really dealing with is people taking a lot of money out of their own pockets and paying for something that actually is needed and should be offered to them. Mm. Because, you know, I think a lot of people are believing that this is a, this off offers an opportunity for a radical shift in the potential for healthcare for so many things. It's not just a weight loss drug. Right, and, and think about it, the, the, the trickle down effect. You fix somebody's weight, the costs of that healthcare, the dollars go down, that person, might be uh, going to work more often. You know, we don't think of the downstream effects of the benefits. We're so fixated on the cost, the upfront costs. You see insurance companies not cover it, states not cover it, Medicare, Medicaid not cover it. For Why what would reason? they want to cover it? Because obesity, if, if everybody else got the memo, right? That obesity right. is a disease. We know how many ramifications, health problems you have if you have severe obesity. Why wouldn't your insurance company want to cover well, that? Think about this. If you don't believe that obesity is a disease and you're running a policy plan, what are you going to convince your members who are making those decisions? You're going to say, why should we bother giving a drug to somebody who should just eat less? Mm. Right? Yeah. So we're still, in the, we're still in the moment where we're trying to convince we're like where we were with alcoholism, where we were with drunk driving, where we were with smoking, trying to get people to understand. You have to educate people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where we were with drunk driving, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, I so remember that. that. I so remember when it was the national campaign against drunk driving. I remember and that. Remember it that. took, and at first the government didn't want to even acknowledge it. They were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a grassroots effort and it just, you know, started to swell. And maybe that's what needs to happen here. Mm. And maybe TikTok is ground zero. Yeah. And this, mm. and, and TikTok is the small pebble when you throw it into the lake, right. it, the, the ripples across. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're truly living in historic times. Like, mm -hmm. It's like almost surreal somewhat, but I feel like this is a time in history, not just in health, but in history where it will prayerfully end a f another form of discrimination um, yeah. and that it's another, I don't want to say battle, I don't want to say another fight, but where you're striving for equality where mm -hmm. you're striving for fairness, I you know, agree. where, where you're striving for justice. Yes. And that's where I feel like we are because now, since we're on these meds, I am treated differently now than I was just two years ago. Right. You know, when I tell people like how much weight I've lost so far, cause like I, I get, I have people coming up to me all the time with their like little MLM stuff of like, yeah. I have a training program. I've got, I do Herbalife or whatever. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm at work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at work. I work in the library. The patients will come up to me and try to offer me like their little pamphlets and stuff. I'm like, first of all, you're not supposed to be soliciting in the library. Second of all, I'm at work. 
<laughs> yeah. When I say that's nice, thank you. I don't need it though. I, I'm I'm on a weight loss journey, and they'll look at me like, really? Because I'm still obviously still big, and I'm like, yeah, I've lost over 80 pounds so far. Oh, then yeah. then I they, know. They, they, I hadn't heard that update. They, yeah. they, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they'll then pivot and be like, oh, because then now they're not looking at me as a fat person on a weight loss journey necessarily like, oh she says she is but the fact that i've already lost this much well oh you must be doing something right, right. keep going and yep. i'm like well a minute ago you were looking at me like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now right. like, oh mm -hmm. you need healed mm -hmm. yep that's true but honestly like i feel like a lot of the pushback some of the not really a lot but some of the pushback mm -hmm. we've been getting lately are from people who look just like us people mm -hmm. who are in the plus size community yes. who don't want things to change like i know some people they, they they checked that chick a few months ago who basically went on tiktok and lied and said you can never eat if you're on um oh, her. Oh, now yeah. I'm gonna her that answer. one yeah, yeah her and yeah. she's like because she's a body positivity plus size mm -hmm. advocate and stuff and so mm -hmm. many of them are so upset that people are losing weight i'm like look if you don't want to lose the weight that's your business mm -hmm. yeah. i don't care that, that is your business if you don't want to lose the weight but yeah. don't come crap on us, the ones who are trying to change our lives. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny right. because I think she took uh, for granted just how big the GLP-1 community really is. Okay. Because people they came. They all do, baby. They all do until they start coming for them. Yeah. 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 And, and we, then they're we, like, we delete, that, delete that video. Delete. <laughs> she did. She was gone. She mm -hmm. was no we everywhere. Or stitched we showed up. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I never understand that too. And when you said about uh, body positivity and people who are wanting one, I always just think about positivity. I'm always trying to be positive. And so I never understand people who want better for everybody but you. That's mm -hmm. what I don't understand. Like, how can you want better for people when mm -hmm. now you're, you're basically shaming other people for what they're trying to do to better themselves? Right. How can that be positivity? positivity for everybody because yeah. everybody is different i mean it's kind of and the backlash and everything has gotten so vitriolic because a couple months ago there was a, a she she's on tiktok but she's mostly on instagram um named rosie beam and she's been on the weight loss journey she's been very upfront of why she's trying to lose weight and it's because it was negatively in fact affecting her health and her quality of life well someone got up in their feelings about that and decided to call her an ableist piece of s and they went off. They just went. I mean, it was like she you you would think she's killing or something online. Wow. And and they didn't stop. They they when people check, you know, called them out for it, like, don't you think you're going a little hard? They doubled, triple, quadrupled down and basically said that anyone who does this, they're a piece of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not that serious. But that's how upset some people are seeing so many people change their lives with these medications mm -hmm. because they it's like they're crabs in the bucket. They don't want us to run. They don't want us to escape. So they're all grabbing onto our legs and pulling us back down again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like sometimes it's like people doing it because they maybe they've tried to get on these meds and they can't get on them. And so it's like, um, I don't want to like it's it's not I don't necessarily think it's like a jealousy thing, but it's almost like them sort of spewing their their anger toward people who are on them and sort of trying to do better. And I don't think that's all of them, no. but I like, oh, I yeah. have some where they were like, Oh, I tried to get on my doctor told me no. So I, I mm. just have to go to the gym every day. You should try that too. Like, mm. yeah, I, I get it. I mean, I, I have been in a bigger body my entire life. I, I, I don't, there is no skinny Kim. There's no Kim this size as an adult. It's weird as shit. Like, I'm sorry, well, but it's wow. just weird. I look at myself and I'm like, like, and I'm not like, this is, this is skinny for me. A size 14 is not skinny in America. Right. But Bro, it's skinny skinny skinny. Friend, you're skinny, but like 26, 28. You're skinny right. to us. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I don't, you and are. I never, but the way, I guess my point is I never wanted to be skinny. I mm. never did. I was never that girl because I, I agree with you. My mother, cause she knew that I'm this way. Right. And there's, y'all know I got diet culture stuff going on from the beginning to Kim, you know what I'm saying? But she, anytime I would talk bad about myself, she'd be like, not today. You are not that you are this, you are that you are amazing. You were, uh, she wouldn't allow it. Ultimate hype girl. What it came to, and she would not let anybody else talk bad about me. So I never had a place in my life where I thought I want to be skinny. I want to wear that size. Mm -hmm. I, I very much got to a place 
of acceptance with my body, right? And the size that it was and that I was plus size and beautiful. And I was okay with that. But I look back now and I know that that was because I was trying to survive, right? Mm -hmm. I was trying to survive in a world that wasn't made for me, right? The way that things are in the world that we exist in today in society and all that, it wasn't made for someone of my size to be, you know, in all the stores and going, you know, I needed to shop online and hope it fit, right? And now all of those different things. And I didn't fit in all the roller coasters. And I, and, and like, I couldn't go on the rides with my friends and all this different stuff. That was not my life. So if I had been put in a position where I all of a sudden had to check all of that, right? To decide if I even wanted to go on a med, especially if I had made a career out of it on TikTok or on Insta or whatever, being like, I'm okay with this. Like this, this is who I was before. But I don't, I'm telling you, I think a lot of times po body positivity has to do with age. This stuff creeps up on you. You get to a certain age, it fucking hurts. Oh like, yeah. Hard, it yeah. just hurts really bad all the time, everywhere, here, here, joints, all of it. And I don't want to be in pain anymore. And that's what it came down to. Mm -hmm. Now I still struggle with, oh dear God, what's going to happen when I'm not a 14? What's going to happen if I'm a 12? What's going to happen if God forbid I'm a 10? Like it sounds bad, Ooh. but I've always been this size. So it's not a happy place to think about for me. So mm -hmm. I can empathize with people around body positivity because I think they just wanted to survive. But I will tell you, anytime I hear them talk, part of me thinks to myself, God, I just want you to take it. And I know that sounds so culty, yeah. but I know when they do and it turns off, mm -hmm. uh -uh. you know, everything will change because it did for That's me. Right. And I didn't even consider it because I didn't even know what was possible before I took the medicine. I just took it because I didn't question. I do now me question them all day long, literally. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I didn't back then. I just took it. And I'm kind of glad to be honest, because I think I may have been closer to the way the way they were. The only reason that I came around is because my numbers weren't good because I was hurting, you know, and you get to a certain age. And like, that's what Dr. Toomer said. Right. She was like, listen, health doesn't have a size, but it does have an expiration date. It does. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think yeah. a lot of and I was a lot like those people, those people in my early 20s. I'm like, well, because, you know, I was fat. Yeah, but I wasn't hurting i wasn't you know my my asthma was you know handled it was okay then i turned 30 then i turned 40 mm -hmm. and then my check knee light came on yeah girl and it's like check knee light, <laughs> you know, check knee light. That's it's like true. check knee light check it's just me. full of shorts <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I don't have mega knees no i more. love it my check <laughs> knee light <laughs> but I was like, you know, that's why you don't see so many of these so-called activists in their 50s and 60s because they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're all sick and dying off, you know, but when you're 19, 20 years old, that's not called your health. That's youth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it hasn't caught up to you yet. It catches up to you. You start getting older because you've been in that bigger body for so long. Yes. And like for me, Tim, like you were saying how you had a positive role model. Yeah. I, I spent my whole childhood in my life being told that it was shameful to be fat. Yes. I'd, get, yeah. I'd catch hell from the kids at school yeah. and then I'd come home and my mom would be like, we're going to Tops, which was take off pounds since it was like- oh, I remember I did Tops in high school. You did tops too? Yes. <laughs> yes. No, it did not work. The tops. Oh, it did. It feel, it, I it, tried it, everything. I have never work. heard of that one. Are you giving me PTSD? I old school. Much. Tops is old school. So my mom would go to Tops. You know, my mom would say that if you lose weight, the kids will leave you alone. That was her mm. whole thing. Mm. So it was diet culture all around me. Yeah. Kids picking on me so much. I mean, God forbid if I so much as even eat a morsel of something, you know, kids were like, you sure you be, should be eating that, Kim? Like in yeah. their mind, they thought I should never, ever eat. Yes. And yep. it, it definitely fueled my ED. It, of course it did. Yeah. Of course it did. Yeah. Say, so just so you know, on YouTube, they actually promote content that talks about like treating and curing and processing eating disorders. So like they actually promote it. So you can okay. say that here. Okay, so I don't have to like, because <laughs> on TikTok, you have to. Yeah, here you can talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I was in high school. And my grandma was at our house, and I was eating a piece of bread. And my grandma, I'll never forget. She said, don't forget your tops. Heffa, I'm having a sandwich. Heffa. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. And, and, nope. 
Yeah. I'm refrain. That was that that goes way back back into the about the yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My mom would be like, you know, I, I love her. She would be like, you know, we shouldn't get bread with our sandwiches. We should just do the the lettuce wrap thing before that was like even before it got to be a thing. Yes. You know, um, she loved Quiznos when they came out with these like sub bowls, sort of like they were they'd oh, have yeah. like, a piece of pita in them, but they were essentially yeah. a sub in the version of a salad. Mm -hmm. And we would get those, and then we would say, okay, only two pieces of pita bread in it, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it starts young. I mean, God forbid if your child is a little chubby, you know? Yep. Yeah. 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 And like my mom was always in, I would say a smaller to average body. So for sure, I don't think she, she, I just think she's a really good white knuckle. And to be honest, like, I think now she struggles Maybe. with insulin resistance so that she's older, but, um, she, and it, she was bathed in diet culture. This whole country is, you know? And so I have a lot of grace for my parents because I do think, I do think they True. really just wanted, and they would always say to me, honey, we just want you to be healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was healthy, but they knew that this is what happens because they were adults and they were starting to deal with weight as they became older, yeah. you know? And so, but I think that there are other people where, I mean, like Cat will tell you, like, which talks on the show very openly about like, it's kind of just like the total opposite with her, you know, in her family, she, there was a lot of othering and a lot of like cat can't have dessert and stuff like that, you know? So I don't know. So I feel like, sorry, I'm, we're going off on of things. We should pull up another clip. <laughs> I got one thing I want to say. Oh, one more thing, Nick. Yeah. Okay. And I'll probably, so I'm casting myself as the Elizabeth Hasselbeck of this panel. But oh, hey, okay. okay. But, so it, throughout my life, there has been a lot. So also, like, there's cut. We were talking about, you know, I want this thing for me, but I don't want it for other people. I think Tiffany, mm. you might have been the one that said that. That's something that I notice a lot in the gay community is that you know we fought for certain rights. But the the weight stigma in the gay community is really vicious. And I did want to be skinny when I was in college. Like I wanted to be a twink. And because I wasn't, you know, and this, it's all kind of the same period. It's so weird. It all ties together. It was never, you know, I don't like you because you're fat. It was always, I'm just concerned about your health. Yeah. Oh when it's like, I'm I meeting you care. on gay.com. Why do you care about my health? Like, this is not about health. Yeah, this is right. about you shaming me for how I look. Yeah. And so I have a lot of cognitive dissonance about, you know, tr I try not to shame anyone that makes choices other than mine. And mm -hmm. I like, you know, I, it's something that I'm kind of experimenting with and doing, but I even have a problem with putting up before and after pictures of myself mm -hmm. because I don't want to be like, that was the bad me. And yeah. this is the good me now. And everyone should be like the good me. Because yeah. it's bad me. Like it, I I try so hard to just, you know, and too, like I think I have more grace for mm -hmm. you know, some of the people that are feeling threatened by these medications because they've found body acceptance. Like I don't want to take away their, mm -hmm. you know, their comfort either. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take that away. But then this is, you know, this is my life and this is what comforts me. So it's a very for me, it's a very, very messy, <laughs> very, very yeah. messy. I get that combination name. of feelings yeah. and yeah, I like, I don't want to take away what makes someone else happy, but at the same I time, I don't want them to take it away from you either. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I can that, tell that's Sabrina that's when that's she amazing. stand up for people that she loves, she like gets, she like gets them. in the camera <laughs> and she's like, I don't want to eat them, but I ain't them but i let them talk bad about themselves and I can see it coming. And listen, when you're in person, when you're a person and you tell her you're her friend and you tell her somebody's wrong with you, she'd be like, Who was it? What they <laughs> you know where they live? Because we're going there right now. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Or was it you, Tiffany? Tiffany or Kim said it. Write it down. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So, were you going to say something, Sabrina? I saw you doing that. No, no, you guys got it. She was like, you said it. That's it. We're there. Once somebody says it, she's fine. I mean, you had a similar experience in college where I was at a party and this guy, had, it was me and another girl, and he looked at me and he looked at her and he goes, you know, if you put your face on her body, you'd be, you'd be a 10. Uh, he said it to me. And you know, I'm like, first of all, first of all, 
that's insulting to me, but you're also insulting her because he was basically telling her that she was ugly, but she mm-hmm. had a nice body. Right. And she was like, excuse me? He's like, if she, if you had her face. He said it what? Insert he said eggplant what? insult right there. He Just a eggplant what? insult right there. That's what I would have used. Like, I threw oh, a drink on him. With your eggplant. <gasps> yeah. Good for you. This is a paper doll. To be fair, I didn't really like the drink anyway, so it was a little bit, you know, but also because I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. And I just sort of drink his face and walk away. Like, first of all, dude, I wasn't even checking for you anyways. Right. Okay. Like, he just like walked up to us, like unprovoked. We weren't looking at him, not like that. And he just comes stumbling up. You know, you put your the face nerve. on her body, you would be uh-uh. a 10. Look, you are horrible. Like they really yeah, are. He deserves oh, a great plant. You would also be a 10. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> be fair. Yeah. Bye. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll go ahead and pull up the next clip because we'll talk. All right, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We hear about people losing uh, muscle mass. Is that true? For yeah. sure. We, again, we, we think about the number, the scale, the change in the is scale. Is that true and is it dangerous? Yes, it's true. When you lose weight, you might lose muscle mass as well as fat mass. I think that's where it becomes important to really counsel patients on the benefits of doing resistance training and making sure you're eating enough protein because in the end, that sort of dual problem can be the fact that you lose too much. I had a mass. friend who was on. That was disappointing to me. Mm. I let me tell you why, because we know, because we interview experts about these medicines that your this medicine is not eating your muscle. We know that it is important for you to do strength training. We know the protein is important, but what he should have said is no matter what weight loss journey you're on, this is a risk. And this is why you do these two things. And right. for sure, taking these medications, you need to do that as well. But he didn't. Mm-hmm. Or well, he didn't out or whatever. I went about what he did say. He also said that that's why it's important to have counseling from your doctor about yeah. what you should be doing while you're taking these medications. And what do yeah. we say all the time? That's why it's important to have the care of a doctor while you're on that's these right. medications. So yes. I see your point, but take take the win that he did at least say that. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought he, I thought he did though. I thought he said, you know, when you lose weight, you're going to lose muscle. He didn't say when you lose weight with a medication, you're going to lose. Muscle. I kind of took it that way. I wish like when you lose that was specific. Mm-hmm. And I think it's yep. just because of what I hear on the lives every single day, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is, is this going to eat my muscle? Mm-hmm. No, friend, it's not. Right? It's right. the weight yeah. loss. And if you don't do these things, then yeah, that can oh, happen. Did you, did you mm-hmm. See that? Can you see it over over <laughs> the gun? Nobody gives oh, a shit, what? guys. When someone's losing weight on a diet, nobody goes. Are you strength training? Right. Right. No, right. Until these came around, and then what you're saying is you don't have any muscle. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and that's, right. I didn't know this was oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. I had no I idea. Right. I had a gun. Gun. <laughs> we'll see you in the gun show, Nick. Yeah. When I first went on Manjaro, that was one of the many scare tactics I heard. You're not sure. going to be losing fat. Mm-hmm. You're going to be losing muscle, Ken. Yeah. It's going to affect your heart. And I'm like, yeah. I, it was article after article after article because even my mm-hmm. husband came to me. He was very concerned. He's like, it says that it's actually false weight loss because you're not losing actual fat. You're losing muscle. And I'm like, um, <sighs> wow. well, that's what, well, right. again, that's where yeah. that, that, a year ago when I first started, that's, Jaro, that's where the articles were. That's all that was out there was that a Zempic yeah. face, Manjaro face yeah. and yeah. Um, losing muscle to <laughs> fat. And like, I was like, well, babe, that's the case with anyone who loses weight. If you're not <laughs> doing it the right way. You yeah, know, yeah, it's like yeah, if you, I mean anyone, if you're if you're working out but you're doing only cardio, not strength training, you're gonna lose muscle mass if you're starving yourself and you're not mm-hmm. doing protein. I mean, well, even bodybuilders out there say that. Exactly. That's how you look skinny fat. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I yeah. enjoy working out, but I feel like, and I can't remember who said it the other day, and I was telling someone about it was that, and I think it was actually Shannon. She said you have to find a joy in working out. Um, if you don't, it's, it, I mean, it's really like anything you're going to continue going back to something that you enjoy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where the joy comes from. Um, and so I'm a, I mean, I, I'm a avid believer in that, but what I was going to say in the beginning though, was every time he starts talking, like I, I borderline roll my eyes. So, um, (laughs) and that, it, that could just be me. I just, I'm like, whatever you're saying now, I just don't know, like. 
I don't know if I'm really listening, but like you said, he did say that, you know, it's, um, he didn't necessarily say for the medicine, but it was, I feel like it was, I mean, it, I assume that's what you were talking about. Yep. Cause that's what we're talking about yeah. here. Um, mm -hmm. So I really sometimes like going back to what Kim said earlier about uh, Dr. Jen, it's like, sometimes I feel like now I believe some things he says and then some things I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really wish he had expanded upon when th with that. Yes. Because like Kim said, no one heard anything beyond that. Yes. You yeah. know, the people who are the mm -hmm. naysayers who are say, well, this is going to cause um, muscle wasting away. They didn't hear nothing past that. Yes. He should have nope. said yes. However, Mm -hmm. And then said, you know, if you're losing yeah. weight and you're on a weight loss journey and you're not eating protein, you're not doing fiber, you're not doing this, that, and the other and strength training, yes, you're going to lose muscle. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, he didn't qualify that yes with anything further. No. And that's that, and that's going to, that's, that's a little problematic. I know he didn't mean to do that probably because Oprah mm -hmm. was kind of firing those questions at him. I was like, girl. Sure. A little aggressive. Yeah, Girl, I'll be my knees over asking me questions. Good gravy. Earlier when he was saying, you know, we have to educate, and that was like the end of our clip. Right after that, she goes, what do you think we're doing here? Like, she like, exactly. what are you doing? And she goes, what yep. do you think we're doing here? That's what we're doing. That's what we're yep. here for. So yeah, she one was, time she said, mm, like he said something in the last, I think it was in the, the clip before this, and she goes, yeah. mm hmm like that's not what we've been saying. Like yeah. we're saying mm -hmm. stuff, but I'm like, I already told you that. Like we already mm -hmm. said that, but I mean, you're still not saying what I want you to say. And I feel like I never really got exactly what I wanted from him. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I just there were know, a lot of there were some though. disappointing moments, and I don't think we clipped it, but the compound moment. That was disappointing. Yeah, that was the one. That's there was why someone I feel in, my in that there. audience that was, was struggling from the disparity and from the, yep. the lack of equity right. with these medications. And I'm sorry, like as a as a white man in this country, especially as doctor, you were sitting in a place of privilege. Okay? Amen. You got to consider yep. how many people are sick that need medicine, and there is stuff available for them. And it's one thing for you to say, "Hey, I'm not cool with a lot of this stuff because it's safe." But I think that obesity specialists have a responsibility to tell us what is. I think, I think yeah, they have responsibility. Is, but that was that. disappointing to me. I feel like he had a responsibility to shut his mouth and not say that about compound because exactly. not only has he come yeah. from a place of privilege, he also is a paid contributor for both Novo and Eli Lilly. So yeah, they mentioned that. Them. Hello. Right. Right. Automatically vilified. Right. 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 I'm so happy that Oprah allowed that statement. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that Oprah allowed that statement because she didn't have to. And I'm yep. sure that, you know, staying in good with them and being advertisers and stuff on her show is going to be positive, especially if she does more, short, more, more shows going forward. But the fact that she allowed that woman to say that, that, and mm -hmm. there were a couple people that were in the audience that take compound and that she allowed them to say it. And I was really glad of that because it's, it's a, a lot of people, you know, right. there's a, I mean, a shortage. Like a it's lot. awful. Yes. Yeah. If so you want to be so down on compound, actually, like make enough, you know, the medicine, but yeah. to, I mean, even beyond that, be honest. Like yeah. they kept be saying, honest. oh, this is just unprecedented. The demand is unprecedented. Okay. That was the first time. Right. You know how many people in America, this is, that's just stupid. I'm sorry. You know how many that people are in America. Time. You know how many insurance companies cover this medication. You know that when you're in shortage that they can compound, mm -hmm. you know these numbers. None of this is a surprise. You know 40% mm -hmm. of America have obesity. You mm -hmm. know there's 25% that actually cover them on the insurance companies. Figure it out. Do the maths. You're brilliant. Uh -huh. There's you know? teams that are dedicated yeah. to this very thing. Legitimately. I mean, teams. Yes. Like, yeah, and right. I, mean, I, I get that it's not. As Release the vials. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 yes. Do and that's the point. Eli. You're so worried. You're so worried about people splitting doses, but yeah. you'll put someone on compounds and never have their business again. Yeah. Because yeah. they found out they can get it cheaper. Mm -hmm. You're shooting yourself in the foot, guys. I own stock. So you're shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is, too, like, you on the earnings call, babe. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Why don't they study, well, you know, the just the abrupt stopping of treatment because their insurance sucks or the shortage or they don't have, they run out of money. What were they studying that? They brought that up. study where about people who are bouncing between doses because they can't get their dose. We need a study mm -hmm. on how that's affecting their treatment from yeah. them having to yeah. jump from twelve point five it's, to five to seven and a half to fifteen. Yeah, because they have to do it. Yeah, I can do a video on it because that's what I'm gonna have to do in like the next two weeks. 
yeah. the outside of my compound, mm-hmm. waiting for that to come. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I'll do That's... it because yeah, I had to go from big man ten to little man <laughs> seven point five. Like yeah, so hey, yeah, but mm-hmm. but you know I and. I think, and the thing was, when Kim, when you said about the earnings call, Eli Lilly clearly said, and I believe whoever was on the call heard them say, there will be shortages throughout 2024, well into 2025. They said this, it doesn't make it right, but this is where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. They said this. I knew then, Mm -hmm. I said, oh, wait a minute. Pretty much they were telling you in a veiled way, yeah, you may not be able to get your stuff. Or when you do, then they, you know, talk about the, you know, people say, oh, well, if you get a three month supply, you're hoarding. No, you get it in because of times yes. like this. Yes. But the release, the vials, yes, do do I think they should? But here is my take on it. And I said this the other day. And this may be unpopular. Do you, Eli Lilly can't even produce an injection pen that they've been using for over 10 years. Trulicity has the same pen, Mount Jaro and Zepbound have the same pen. They can't even produce that right now. So to ask them to produce vials when they don't even have the manufacturing capacity to even produce what they already have, which, yeah. which that should be seamless. Well, yeah. I, I guess I have I have two. Um, they do make insulin, and insulin come in vials. Exactly, but that's mm-hmm. coming in shortage. Also, I just read oh that that Humira and oh, another uh, cancer causing a, a cancer treating drug, and I was going to make a video on it. Eli Lilly has basically made a statement saying that's going to be in shortage, and that just came out today. And I guess Are someone, those in vials? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh. Someone just made the point that vials are in shortage in Canada. Like mm-hmm. so I mean the the common understanding is that it is the pens, but is it like do we have like definitive information that that's it, or are we just speculating? We'll never actually. Said. I thought it was just. A, I think that it. we're just speculating because mm-hmm. Nick. I think you bring up a good point. And that's why, you know, everyone is like, release the vials, release the vials. I'm like, that sounds good. That mm-hmm. sounds good in theory. In but theory, when you yeah. really did drill down into it. They don't have those either. They don't have the manufacturing capacity, period. Wow. Because remember, they were supposed to build the manufacturing plant one hour north of Indianapolis. That still hasn't been built. And oh, yeah. and and I, a, along with Dave and along with many others, I believe that Eli Lilly is ex, uh, is exhibiting exhibiting corporate irresponsibility. Yeah. You yeah. are you oh. are launching new markets and you can't even serve the markets that you have now with injection pens that you've been using. For at least 10 years. So mm-hmm. it's not like this is something new. Now, yep. release the vials sounds very good. They don't have the manufacturing capacity to do it. But isn't it, easier to make, isn't it easier to make a piece of glass with a stopper in it than a, a, a syringe? A pen with one yeah. You would think it was, but I think no, that we've learned with it. COVID, the worldwide supply chain, if one piece of the chain breaks, every other piece falls falls a down piece. A so piece. so everything has to everything has to work in concert and this is just my speculation mm-hmm. there's there's a piece of the supply chain that's not working in concert we need competitors we need yeah. more pharmaceutical companies to come out that's with happening there are tons of things and studies yeah so yeah we need, we need competitors when it comes and, to disparities what scares me right now isn't the shortages um it's is my is my insurance company going to continue to cover it oh, if yeah. I 
Very true. Person. In testing lower with my A1C. Like I have my new, my updated blood work is coming on Friday. I got to go to my doctor. We're going to talk about going up to 10 milligrams. But my concern is that if my A1C is lower and I'm no longer considered pre-diabetes, is my insurance company going to turn around and be like, yeah, we were covering that for you 100%, but um, ma'am, you want to start paying 1400 a month for this. But Here's that's her. why you, you get- don't the diagnostic criteria no more. Yeah. But that's why you get a clinician that knows how- to and I think Lydia, Kim, Kat, you know, a uh, Sabrina, I'm all of us right now. kind of yeah. know firsthand. You get a clinician that knows how to advocate for you for continuation of therapy. This is something that nurse practitioner Gail said, and it really hit home. She said, even if an insurance company tries that trick, and we know nurse practitioner Gail, she, you know, it's like. Even if uh, an insurance company tries that trick, <laughs> oh, she, I love said, it. she said, what your, your clinician is obligated to say, not just continuation of therapy, but your glucose is controlled. If you take me off, if they take you off mm -hmm. of the medication and your glucose goes through the roof, that's a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So the thing is control. That's why when people ask me in maintenance and my, my doctors have me injecting every week, mm -hmm. I'm still injecting every week. Dr. Michael Albert said that, and now it makes sense now. I mean, everything he says makes sense, but sure. it really makes sense. Now, Dr. Albert said, even in maintenance, the optimal therapy is still to inject weekly because mm -hmm. then you're showing that the medication is working because it's controlling yeah and right. if it's and supposed if, to getting all of it your system right and back in, all of instead your system. of having the spikes which is what you don't want you right. don't want the spikes right you want the control <clears throat> when i just make them very I will, I will always be a weekly injector because i'm here to tell you yeah. if i skip one day i feel like complete Trash when mm -hmm. I take that. Medicine. Oh yeah, I skip. Oh, yeah. I need I the inflammation reduction. I I can't mm -hmm. like move through this world without pain, without the inflammation reduction. Mm -hmm. so I'm, yeah. but, I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Right. Yeah. right. Thankfully, yeah, yeah. I, my doctor is amazing. And so I know that if it, if it does come, even though I'm concerned, mm -hmm. if it does come to that, I know that he'll be like, oh, hell no, we ain't gonna let this happen. And I don't my watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they can fight all they can. But at the end of the day, the insurance companies, the policies, for the most part, they are set and they're very, mm -hmm. they're not evolved. And you will fight and there will be months where you won't have your medicine, if not years or longer. And mm -hmm. that's the thing is they do and they put every gate they can in place. So now you got to do a PA every dose increase. Now you got to do fucking Weight Watchers. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of apologize to my daddy if he's watching. I'm sorry, daddy. Weight Watchers. <laughs> sorry, daddy. <laughs> sorry, daddy. Sorry, daddy. Sorry, daddy. No, Weight Watchers for six months. You know what I'm saying? Like they're yeah. doing everything they can to stall and get in the way of you taking your medicine because they don't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're ever going to, that's, that's where I think a lot of this comes down to living for today, right? Aww. Because we can say that we hope Right. That we, I, I, you guys hear it all the time. I will take this medicine forever. The people that are taking this medicine, even the ones on compound, we are in any place of privilege. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh. Oh, oh I love it. Girl, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. What do we do earlier? <laughs> Oh, you have the effects going like, like this. The balloons went off. <laughs> yeah, the fireworks. <laughs> yeah. The fireworks went off. It's not yeah. working. Like but like that. that's true, right? Like that's the thing is all of us here taking this medicine, guys. People who are on this medicine on on brand, like we're gonna call it retail brand. I'm gonna say because no, there's no generic, right? Mm -hmm. That is only two million people. Right? Or no, it's two percent of America. What was the number? Was right. it two million people or two? Was it two percent of America? Let's go with 2% of America that are taking the obesity versions of these medications. 2% that are taking the obesity versions of these medications. That's uh, it out of 40% of America. Like that is a fraction. They, they can't even keep up with that. Yes. Indeed, he made a good one right there, which he just that said. Part. 
when your yeah. cholesterol comes down, they don't take you off the meds as a rule. Or if your BP comes down, they don't stop the meds. That's no, no they don't. No. No. Unless you, you lose weight, weight and then the they do. Fat. Right. If you lose weight and they do, sometimes you do get off of these other medications, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Because like the right well. weight was the root cause. So sometimes that does happen. But it's not that the disease got better, right? It was just what you kind of like what was contributing, the contributing factor got better. So they do. But it's, you know. It's true though. Like it's nowhere else in medicine. Do we like stop therapies when they're working for chronic diseases? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And then the NHS in the UK, right? They're like, oh, you can have it for two years. Yeah. That's it. You're done. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. All, look, all I, we have is today. That's all we've got. All. Yeah. It's like yeah. literally legitimately one box at a fucking time. Like that's where we're at. Sorry, dad. <laughs> but that's what you were saying someone was in a live from uk that said from aljaro you know how we say and how many of the doctors say stay on the lowest most effective dose right mm -hmm. yeah she she said over there they make you go up every month in doses there are some, there are some yeah. here yeah and is that why some people get so sick because they're not feeling great and they're like, oh, you're throwing up? Well, we got to bring you up for the entire yep. mm -hmm. Like, Yep. That's right. Wasn't that woman who died who she was taking two GLP-1 medications she was two and they were moving her yeah. up really quickly because she was uh, trying to lose weight as fast for as possible? Yeah. Yep. For the was wedding. Yeah. 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 Yep. Was it in the UK? Anytime it comes and talks about no, weight. That, that was um, Australia. Level set. You know? Mm. Yeah. It was a med spa. She it was sad. Like, her, her issue was she was going to two different med spas. She was getting two different medications. Mm -hmm. She wasn't listening to her. There was one, they had one doctor come on that he, they didn't outright say that they were treating them, but they did later. The husband later said, oh yeah, she was getting treated at that med spa. She was taking two different medications. She was taking high doses of both of those medications. And the husband yeah. even went on to say that she wasn't eating. So, wow. Yeah. I've had people DM me um, that have you know come in my lives and stuff who said that their doctor started them off at five milligrams and then they're, now they're moving up to twelve point five and I'm like what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Super scared for those people. You're jumping you all the way to the top. Like, you got to be careful about what you say, right? But you're like, yeah. ooh, like mm, mm -hmm. maybe get a second opinion. I don't right. know. This is not right. medical <laughs> advice, <laughs> but the you may want to ask them. You like that's because I can't. I don't know, doctor. I'd be like, but that's what I've told. Do you need a doctor? Like that's kind of where I go. I, go, I know a lot. Do you need one? Because it doesn't sound like it's a lot. You know, I mean, I think it's fair, right? There are people just trying to figure it out on their own, and they're going to someone who doesn't know shit about it. And like, if you yep. don't know about it, just refer people out for God's sakes. You know, I know. said uh -huh. go to an obesity specialist or go to an endocrinologist because mm -hmm. um, I don't know what kind of doctor you have, but starting at five and then bumping you to twelve in a twelve point five five in like a month is yeah. a bit much. That's the thing I always say is, some of these doctors are trying to dose Manjaro like his ibuprofen. It don't yeah. work like that, bro. <laughs> it don't yeah. work like that. Yep. Look, look, oh, but that that wasn't the worst. Just no, yesterday, no. and that's why I made that story of like, y'all are on one today because my head felt like it was like this. There literally was a community member, and my heart just sunk. After one week of 2.5, her she said her doctor said, "Oh, it's not working. Let's move you up to five. Mm. One week. Oh my God. My eyes. Tay. Tay can tell you. My eyes were like, yeah. What? It took a month for birth control to be 100 percent effective. So like right. a week. Any sort of some people. Oh, I said yeah. one week. Oh. I had some woman come in and go, oh, like my doctor, I've been on it a month, and my doctor decided I wasn't losing weight fast enough and also put me on phenamine and metformin. Why? Oh, good God. Are you, are you hungry? No. Are Are you losing weight? Yeah, losing weight in the first month is already a win, right? Like, mm. I don't understand. Do you need help? Do you need a doctor? Like, that's where I'm at. Let me just connect you with care. Like, you know, because <laughs> right. I, yeah. I can't solve that. I, that sounds awful. You know, but my doctor, he here. wasn't bumping me up too fast because he was like, I don't want to move you up too fast. I want to exactly. have you on a dose for a few months and stuff. And then, of course, when I asked him, can I bump up to 7.5? He was like, did you get the, the constipation under control? Because I was like, I'm not losing. I'm not losing. Like all last summer, I was complaining yeah. about it. Finally, yeah. we got the constipation under control, and then we started seeing consistent weight loss. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my God, this is what has been hindering me the whole time." So yeah. I'm wondering if this is happening to some people. They're having these yeah. other side effects that are affecting their weight loss, and instead of them looking at it, or the doctors rather looking at it from all angles, like mine did, 
They're just saying, we're going to bump you up to five. We're going to bump you up to yeah. ten. We're going to bump you up to whatever. Just go hard. Let's yeah. just go hard. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. They're doing the road. Fifteen. You know. Yeah. Well, this reminds me also about. Sweet baby Jesus. Go to Big Daddy. Mm -mm. Sweet baby yeah. Jesus. <laughs> the there's upper so, room. <laughs> sorry. There's so many articles where the headline is, yeah. medications are horrible. Like, yeah. literally, my two years of hell on Ozempic. And it's like, I was taking it for a month and then my doctor bumped me up and then I started vomiting and, and then he kept me on it for another six months. And then he bumped me up again and I kept I vomiting vomit every day. Yeah. And it's like, and too, like, I, I specifically do not want to say like that severe side effects don't happen or that there are all these cases. Like I, I know for a fact, like there are people who just can't tolerate them and have some bad side effects from the get go. And I don't want to take anything away from that experience. But every single day, and I'm not exaggerating, almost almost every single day, I see an article where the headline is these medications are dangerous and horrible. And invariably, there is at least one person in that article that was having severe, severe side effects and their doctor bumped them up. And kept yeah, cut them on it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, why? Try why? Another one. There's not just Ozempic. There's another drug that you can yeah. try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what scares me too. Like you know what they're saying that what you were saying, Nick, is that instead of looking at the, from the situation of maybe this is not the drug for you, they're just like, well, maybe we should try the next dosage. You know, mm -hmm. with Ozempic, it took me two years to realize the Ozempic was what was causing my IBS to get worse. Mm -hmm. I was I went from having like bad explosive diarrhea. It's, it's, <laughs> we can talk about poop is a thing. Every week, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> to having constipation with Manjaro. Like I it, like I got off Ozempic went on Manjaro and within a week, those symptoms, you know, resolved themselves. Yeah. And, it, and I realized two years of my life with this happening and it was the damn Ozempic. And then of course I talked to my doctor and he's like, why the hell didn't you tell me two years ago that yeah. this is happening to you? And I'm like, I, I, I didn't know that that medication at the time could have done that to me. Yeah. I did not know. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, it, 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 and that's bad. Like you, you should have told me. And I think that some of these doctors who are not in the know or educated enough on the medications, you know, they're not looking at the side effects and going, should this be happening? Maybe I should dose them down or take them off entirely. Try something else. Yeah. Some of these doctors are literally just like the wild west. Yeah, um, it is. Wild west. You know, of course they're fly by the seat of our pants and do whatever the hell we're going to do. Yeah. Go ahead, JT. Look, so so I'm sorry. I I had my snuggie because I had Maljaro cold. Like oh, I was sorry. We all that. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. freezing right now. Yeah, and, and and I literally was like, oh my god. But <laughs> many what what I've learned, and I'm not sure if uh, anyone in the comments on the panel has learned this too. This happened to my mom just recently. Remember, I was so excited. My mom finally got to go to an endocrinologist and. After the appointment, she cried and she said, I finally feel like diabetes was not my fault. I finally mm -hmm. feel heard. Yeah. And uh -huh. she went for her follow up with her primary care physician. Do you know what that ninja did? Mm, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Woo! did you say did you say? No, ninja, ninja. I heard it. I heard it. Ninja, ninja. I heard it. <laughs> no, no, no. I heard it too. It was no, 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 no. <laughs> he said he got upset because she went to see an endocrinologist. Oh, I man. say all of that to say that some primary care physicians, some general practitioners do not want to refer their patients to specialist mm -hmm. because they want to keep them all to themselves. Yeah. So, so, so IE, if your general practitioner yeah. is not well versed in GLP ones, yeah. they're yeah. like, like Kim just said, it's going to be the wild, wild west, as mm -hmm. opposed to if you go to a specialist mm -hmm. that can maybe better manage you or go to a telehealth that knows obesity that can better manage you that may be better yeah. and and it's beyond sad because yeah. even with I, I just went monday i haven't even talked about this i haven't even told my pcp that i have an endocrinologist yeah mm -hmm. i because i'm oh, sorry go on Oh no, because yeah. And yeah. I'm and I'm like, I don't know how that'll shake out. And I'm pretty 
outspoken, Mm -hmm. but she scares me. So I'm like, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that. And I, you know, I don't, I, and like, I mean, like now I'm even like, do I need a new PCP? I mean, like, you know, really? what do I do? Because she wanted to stop me at five milligrams. Uh, yeah. See, I and think my one c was still not under control. Yeah. I think that any primary care physician that doesn't want to recommend you to a specialist, it's a red flag. Oh, yeah. I go to my doctor and say, I'm Most not sure why I keep getting dandruff or psoriasis. And he doesn't say, well, ma'am, you need to go to a dermatologist. You know, <laughs> I'm just here for flu shots and shit. You know, if he's not saying yeah. that, <laughs> yeah. and he's like, no, you know, they're just like, no, I'm going to keep you to myself. That's a red flag. That's yeah. a red flag. Oh, My yeah. doctor will, he'll, he'll, he will very easily tell me like, ma'am, Kim, um, yeah, I'm a PCP. You need to see your pulmonologist about this shit. Like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. You need to go back to your, gyne- your gynecologist. Yeah. I don't prescribe those medications. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Any doctor that's like, no, you don't need to see a specialist. Red flag. Red mm-hmm. flag. Like that guy that's on TikTok with the red flag. He's like, ma'am, ma'am. 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 <laughs> Waving the flag. <laughs> yes. I love that, I love that oh guy. <laughs> I, Kim, I miss seeing your videos. I'm so mad at TikTok for real. I'm like, I where know. is Kim? Well, I go find her. You I, I, I go to Kim like, Kim every other day. Kim. Every other day. And I try oh not to like, I, try not to, like I don't know what's going on. I like her videos, but I'm telling you, like, um, it's hard because I'm like, mm, I want to like it. No, I like it tomorrow. I like it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to mess up the algorithm. I like it. <laughs> Love it. TikTok's angry at me. Okay, let's friend. see the next clip. You ready? Okay. Yeah. okay. We're ready. Kim's favorite. Oh, we made it? the decision to not continue serving on the board of Weight Watchers. And I made that decision because. I wanted no perceived conflict of interest for this special. And I also donated all of my shares in Weight Watchers to the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture so that I could have a conversation with you, Seema Sistani, the CEO of Weight Watchers. And I'm glad you're here because I joined Weight Watchers and joined the board back in 2015. And at the time, I was really very excited. I was excited about, I was counting those points and I said, this is it, this is it. (laughs) This is it, and I did. I lost some weight, I put back on some weight, and now Weight Watchers has changed its philosophy and has purchased a company that is in the weight loss medications. Can you tell us why that philosophy changed? We are the most clinically tested, evidence-based, science-backed behavior change program. But we were missing the third prong, which was biology. There could be somebody who needs medications because they have that biological underpinning. And therefore, what is so important is for us to provide that care and also to help people release the shame. For all those people who came side by side and took on the behavior change, some of them walked away without the success. Mm -hmm. And to those people, I want to say, it's not your fault. Why do we need Weight Watchers if we've got ZepBound and Wigovi? Weight Watchers is not just about weight loss. It's about community, it's about education, and it is about care. That's our new philosophy, is to help people live longer, happier lives with weight health care. Okay. On a diet. On a okay. diet. Okay. I wish okay. we had done that clip so everybody has their all changes. Exactly. We'll go around. We'll each have our moment. That's right. Everyone. Yeah. JT, why do we need <laughs> whack of bean? Why do we need that? What, 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 what? Okay, so behavioral. This might be too, like, literal. But <laughs> forgive my ignorance. Hmm. But what was the the slogan or the motto last year? I, I don't know. I don't think they. I still don't think they know what the slogan or the motto is this you know, year. I was asking. I, was, I, I don't think that, that landed. Y'all need to go back to the drawing board. Like, like, it works. Like right? what was the slogan last year? Did yeah. you say this is new? So what yeah. was the slogan last year? I don't know. Slogan should be like, look, we're sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, we're sorry. We're just okay. We're, I, we have to. And and Weight Watchers has been very quiet. 
They've yep. been a good decision. Too quiet. The first time. They have been they quiet. Be quiet. They have been quiet. And mm-hmm. I always think of those daggone New England Patriots when they beat Atlanta in the Super Bowl. They were too quiet. That Why do we week. have to talk about that, JT? Why you had to bring that? <laughs> JT's all Why, Why would you do that? that? Wait a minute. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Atlanta Falcons Day is tomorrow, 328. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> My God. Have mercy. Sorry. I'm having flashbacks okay. now. <laughs> but, but I mean, okay. no, but like, does anyone know what the slogan was last year? And I'm not being funny because I was going to think there was a slogan. Okay. I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I just think they were like, uh, I we just care about all the things. No, you don't. You're I wish that everybody that was here, like everybody that's in the chat, all you 111 people, could have seen Kim's face as that woman was talking. Cause I like y'all, y'all that are here on the panel, y'all saw me laughing, right? And covering her face is because I was laughing with her face. Like, as she talked, like literally Seema starts talking, Kim goes, and then she goes. <laughs> <laughs> but Kim's video, but Kim's video yeah, were like, man. that part, that part, that oh, part. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, when she yeah. I ain't playing retirement. I still like retirement plan. I still feel the exact same way about Seema that I did before. In that, she's just mopping up a mess that yeah. years and years of diet culture at Weight Watchers has created, right? But no, none, nothing that ever comes out of her mouth is going to be enough. Nothing, zero. Mm. They could hire the PR queen of the planet. To tell her exactly what to say, and it no. will never be enough. They I'm need to be ready for them to be quiet. I'm Olivia quiet. Pope can't help them. I'm sorry. No, 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 she can't. Just be quiet. That's not it. Olivia Pope. Oh. <laughs> what you got, Nick? What you got? She can't help you then. Here's my thing. Number one, she looked really desperate. I felt like there was someone holding a gun to her head. She's like, no, <laughs> really. Like, <laughs> oh, Oprah's <laughs> left us. Oprah's I left us. I have to say something with substance. I, I, I feel kind of like, <laughs> Seema looked a little, you really stepped right in it, didn't you? You know? But number two, Ugh, Sabrina is desperate to say something, so I just want to say that. Okay, okay, Sabrina, you go next. Nick, finish. <laughs> okay. Sabrina's next. This Here is the over. most studied behavioral program. Mm. You knew that biology was a problem. If you have those results, you didn't just fail some of those people, you failed most of those people. Mm. Oh, Isaac American says point. this is one of the most rep- replicable and reliable results in all weight loss interventions is that most people will fail. You had that information you had that data don't it pretend is. you didn't know because, because they wanted that that bread son i know but that's that's the problem that's you the knew. problem they knew i'm with Nick. I'm like, in, they knew. 2012 they toes the guys 20 years of geomedic if you are the head or in any kind of any situation of, of, of authority for a the biggest diet company on the planet the gold standard in diets, and you didn't know there was a treatment for the disease of obesity for 20 years. You were asleep at the wheel, and I hope you're fired. Mm-hmm. I hope you're fired. fired. You missed the boat. Fired. 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 Full Southern. Fired. I hope she's fired. fired. I don't know how mm-hmm. young <laughs> I'm with it. They knew. That's the problem. It's different they when know. you know better and you do better. But it's no, very, very, very bad when you did know and you did not. <gasps> you, oh my gosh. Flashback. That's what she said last episode when Seema was on the first of Oprah episode. She said, "Oh well, now we know better, so we're gonna do better." You're full of crap. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a lot of people who love Weight Watchers or people who defend Weight Watchers, they they hate Noom so much because Noom are like, let's approach it oh, yeah. from the psychology perspective. It's the yeah. same so, thing. Yep. Oh, ooh, oh. Right he was on here. Comes movie. Megan McCain for the Noom. Okay, here we go. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, then Sabrina. Then Sabrina. <laughs> Noom. Noom was great to me. I. I actually. It was anti diet culture for me. Like. Good. Good. Yeah. I haven't used it, so I can't talk shit about him. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk crap about him because I. It's the only one I haven't done, y'all. It's the mm. only one. But I did do way back <laughs> as I did. And I know yeah, that that it's because they rejected me. <laughs> like, oh, help. And they were like, no, no one can help you. Go get mad at that. They said thoughts and prayers. Thoughts okay. and prayers, honey. Just push away. 
<laughs> okay, Sabrina, your turn. Um, well, it was kind of speaking to what uh, Nick was saying. Um, so they, they were talking about biology, right? And they're most studied 20, 20 years. So you guys have already covered what I was going to say. But my, the second thing I wanted to bring up. So taking a step back, why was Weight Watchers even there? If this was about a G, educating yeah. people about GLP-1s, right? Like that's what the intention of this was. The, the shame game, all of that. Mm -hmm. Why were they even there? It was a commercial. It That's was, exactly I, what I, it was. I, I honestly I think it was some, some respect too. I, yeah, I, I think, think it was to make it her head. She comes from the media, right? Like, like that's the thing is Oprah was was a, was a news anchor. So mm -hmm. she definitely, I think, lives by the we need to share all the God, that's why I do this yep. show. We but need see, to share I think all it was the like an underhanded, right? mm -hmm. I think it was an underhanded point. I think that she had her on to say, "Oh, well, you guys have been out here doing all these things and all that. Well, now you bought a now you There's bought a company moment. that does these medications." Yeah, mm -hmm. she did so say what, that. You bought a. That's what she said. You bought a company. So so I think it was like to make that point. Yeah. Oh, you guys have been on this train about how you need to watch the points and do the things and this and mm -hmm. that. And oh, well, now you're in the GLP game. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. Why has that changed? Right. Yeah. That's why I think in Oprah, she's, I mean, we've seen you know, my whole life. Like I remember in the eighties, the first time she lost weight and she came out there, the big metaphast, she was, right? Throws it off, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and it was all dramatic and like her weight went up and down for years. Mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. It's like, she was Weight Watchers, years. like spokeswoman. And I'm like, okay, so you're on Weight Watchers and yet you haven't lost. And I was like, this is interesting. So <laughs> it kind of made the company look a little bad that you've been on it. You're a proponent of Weight Watchers and yet you're still the same size. Does it mean no, she lost? She's, she's lost. It doesn't ever. work. You know, she can't always lose. Well, she's yeah. always been able to lose. She was losing. Yeah. yeah. Never she said when I brought that trash bag of fat, I regained that very day. Like I started yeah. regaining after right. I brought that trash bag of fat. Yeah. She always regains. And she said that in that moment too. I was very excited when I joined Weight Watchers. And I was like, this is it. I remember that commercial. Mm. And she was like, this is the thing. This is the thing I've been missing. Yeah. And that's the problem is a lot of people, including children, like myself, adolescents, everybody who thought if I can't do this one, the one mm -hmm. that Oprah does, right? The one that all these people are doing, right? Because like, that's the thing is they were the best at getting these like, you know, spokespeople. N nobody, mm -hmm. gold standard, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're a machine and they were the best at it. So mm -hmm. I thought, and I know other people did too, if I can't make this work, it has to be. I always came back to Weight Watchers. Oh, I always came back to Weight Watchers. Time. Like, I know it sounds bad, but it was like a abusive yeah. relationship. Honestly, yeah. it was like, honestly, it was the only system that I could game. Game. Let me try again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take me back. Let me, and of course, they were just willing to take me right back yeah. in, take yeah. my money. Yeah. 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 After my second stint with Weight Watchers about a decade ago, mm -hmm. I had one of the worst relapses on my bulimia because of Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. I said, ah, I got to stop this. Because the first time I relapsed, so I'm like, all right, I stopped it. Then I went back a couple years later, tried it again, relapsed again. And that that second relapse was the worst one I'd had in a very long time. Yeah. And I was like, maybe Weight Watchers is the problem for me. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe mm -hmm. this counting of points and trying to eat as few points as possible is not helping, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly not your brain. Like, I mean, you and I struggle. Right. Kat and you and me, we all, we all struggle with um, binging disorder. And, and yeah, for sure. Go and ahead. I have an unpopular oh, opinion. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, let's right. hear. I want to hear. Hit it, girl. girl. <laughs> so, and I know that, and I'm going back to kind of what um, Lydia was saying earlier about Dr. Jen when we had that whole conversation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, she stated, you know, people can change. Mm -hmm. But now when we're looking at um, Seema and we're thinking about what she is saying there, mm -hmm. can she not change as well? Because she can be a change leader. Mm -hmm. And I do believe in change leaders um, in that space mm -hmm. um, to try to do. Because right now I feel as though it's it's like a... It's a lose-lose, I feel like, sometimes. Yeah, I agree with that. For her, it's a lose-lose. Yeah. 
she and and I think she can change a thousand percent as a human being. But our like nothing she's ever going to say as the CEO of Weight Watchers is going to make us all forgive Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. No, and honestly, like they got to worry about the new generation. Like I've said that from the beginning. Yeah. You got to quit with the ones that are broken, y'all. Go go for the new one. And oh, I don't. Yeah, I will yeah. tell you, I don't even talk shit about her. Like, cause I, yeah. I don't want, if, if I want to get an apology guys, I want the old white guys who decided to give me a book and create a platform mm -hmm. for me as an mm -hmm. adolescent to learn, to obsess about food yeah, at right. a young, as a young girl. I want those people. That's I want right. those people who decided let's create a system where we're not honest about any nutritional facts. And we just assigned it a point to where mm -hmm. you need us forever because you don't know how to eat without us. That's mm -hmm. right. People I want an apology from. And that's going to be the person. That and is the one. Right? I, so for her, it means nothing to me. Yep. Right? Yep. It means nothing to me. I yeah. agree. Well, I feel like it goes back to what Kim said, know. too. But Kim, with that same guy saying, oh, you're, you know, change your face and put it on your body. Like, that's the one we need to rise for. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. We're ready to, but, we ride but, now for yeah. that. And I but, feel like it's the same. Like, it goes back to that person because um, in, in and, and I'm in banking, and I feel yes, as though you have to use your words wisely. We mm. talk about perception multiple right. times, and yeah. I feel like it goes back to perception because my perception is going to be different from Nick's. It's yes. going to he's going to be different from Sabrina's, and it's all in the delivery. If the yeah. delivery is not good, it's going to have a um, you're going to have a bad experience, and it's all mm -hmm. about the experience. Because I hear people yeah. now say that they're still with Weight Watchers because their experience is different from yes. what it may have been for anybody else, and so yes. that yeah. that I, that's what I feel like is like. That person is what made it horrible. It really is. That's what made it horrible. Um, and you know, I, I like I used to get the books and things, but I've never even been to a meeting. But the stories that I hear, that is awful. It really is awful. Now I see the people again. I because I always like to see both sides. I'm always gonna see I it. I can I like the reasons that you're here. Yeah. Because, because I'm a, yeah, I'm a believer in putting myself in everyone's shoes. Mm -hmm. And if I was there with um, somebody that had a horrible experience, uh, it would be a horrible experience for me because I know who I am. Now, yeah, if I was right. there and it was a perfect experience and I'm just like, this is for me. These are my people. Mm -hmm. I have found my tribe. Yeah. That makes it different. That yes. makes it different. Yes. Yeah. I think it's fair. And I think that, you know, I think you guys know, um, I, I am very much anti Weight Watchers. I just am. Now, that being said, I've had plenty of people that follow me like, I like it, Kim. And I'm like, I'm so happy for you. Right. Mm -hmm. That is how I feel about it. I want anybody to use what works for them. Mm -hmm. But I don't I've, I feel like if there were any other company that have traumatized the amount of people that they have traumatized that tried to get into healthcare, we would uprise. Right. Mm -hmm. like it's very, very bad. And so I can't like for me and myself and my personal opinion and my platforms, right? Like I don't feel comfortable being like, sure. <laughs> like, and I also have like, there's a certain sense of like responsibility. I feel to be as authentic as I possibly can be. And so I definitely mm -hmm. talk about my opinions mm -hmm. because it is, they are my platforms. The difference is, is I invite people like you and people who think different mm -hmm. to share. Mm -hmm. I have had many, many people that are with Weight Watchers now on this show. Right. I've had them on the show and I have let them say that they're with sequence and that they are with White Watchers, mm -hmm. but they've also talked their about their poor experiences when they were young on White Watchers. That's right. So yeah. I can, can we make a point too? I really Go do because I want everybody to. It's important. That's right. Yeah. And I know some people were saying in the um in the chat, and I was looking at some of the comments about like um James Corden and um like um, DJ Khaled. Khaled. Yeah, like where yeah, are they? they? And I didn't even think about that, but I was like. I haven't seen them in forever. Like when I, when we thought and we've seen now Oprah and I feel like that's the only person we've seen, but yeah. where are the rest of them? Like, are they done now that they are doing, okay. you know, given the GLP? They're on a Zempic. <laughs> <laughs> that's where, I, where are they now? <laughs> where are they now? Like, I wonder, like literally, did you, yeah. before they switched over to say now they're doing injections, like now did you gain your weight back? Like mm -hmm. what is, what is going on? Where are you? Where Oprah was big enough to break her NDA. That's the thing. I don't think <laughs> I don't think any of them True. could break their NDA. Yeah. They're mm. not big enough. Yeah. 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 Wow. Man, Oprah flushed it all down the toilet. Oh, God, I love her so much. <laughs> I, I loved her before, but Lord help me. I'm uh -huh. this <laughs> she really loves it now. Are you ready for the I'm ready? looking at the comments? Let's do it. Let's do it. You pick yeah. up more. Calories in, calories out. If you're fat, you're lazy. None of those things were true for my daughter. 
It was Maggie's pediatrician that brought it to our attention. He believed it was a genetic ties and, it, and that she needed extra help, mm -hmm. and it was a severe case. Mm -hmm. Maggie was 13 years old in eighth grade when she had bariatric surgery. But just as a mom seeing your child wheeled into an operating room, there's that moment of, am I doing the right thing? Around the time of the bariatric surgery, Maggie was also prescribed Victosa. Victosa is a liraglutide, early predecessor of Ozempic, or a semaglutide that a lot of people take now. I remember whenever I was in third or fourth grade, a little girl came out to me and told me that I was fat. And in that moment, it was the first time in my life that I realized that I was different, or that I felt different from everybody else. Don't forget to take your medicine before church, babe. Okay. The Victoza helps me not eat as much. When she started to lose that weight, it was like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon. Guys, I'm going to prom for my first time. For Maggie, obviously, it was all about fashion and clothes and friends and parties. But for me, it was no more fatty liver disease. A1C levels are normal. Two years after surgery was the first time she had ever had normal blood work come back. I could be through, I was like, oh. It prepared her for a life of health and fitness and wellness. Oh my God, you're so pretty. Her story touched me so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what I think was a moment that was missed on this entire show, and this would have been the perfect opportunity, is no one discussed what insulin resistance is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Buddy yeah. said, and that would have been perfect. Yep. Why does a diabetic medication work on people with obesity? Mm. You had obesity. The elephant in the room. Yeah. 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 It was mm. a huge mess. Yeah, that story got me too. I mean, I, I was very similar, not to that level of weight. And I got to tell you before the show, I didn't even know there was such a thing as bariatric surgery for children with obesity. Now, mm -hmm. my obesity was, was bad, right? Um, when I when we had Dr. Rosen on episode five, which was called Fat and Lazy, I asked him when he said, listen, let's talk about it. Because I, in my brain, I'm like, I would never. First of all, my child lives in a smaller body. I mean, he's a tall, big human, but he little. Right. So that's a very different thing. If I'm seeing a child that looks like me going through what I went through, it, you have to have the conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. We all have to at least consider. And Dr. Rosen said that. And I heard him. I said, I just didn't even know that was a thing. And he goes, oh, yeah. Like we have all of these test mm -hmm. things that we can do now to test for genetics. And mm -hmm. there, there's this thing called Prater Willis. I think it's how you say yeah. it. Yeah. And Prater he Willis. talked about specifically about how the only treatment for Prater Willis is a lock on the refrigerator. It's the only mm. treatment. These children that struggle with this genetic disease. But bariatric surgery and these medications are good options, right? So he was saying, like, you have to talk about it. Like, it, but we always look at it like keep these shots away from our kids. That was what he said. He, that was kind of like the, the theme, right? Keep all these shots, the shots for, you know, um, for people that, you know, want to transition and things like that, right? Like there is like, the, that's a big thing around shots, shots, no shots, right? No hormones, no this, no that. But people just aren't educated enough. They really aren't. So like we've had a couple episodes about childhood obesity and we can, we will continue to do that because the conversation has to be had. And I think that it's just a matter of having options, but he did say, I thought this was really powerful. He said, mm -hmm. why would you not consider an FDA approved medication of which we have 20 years of data on, Right before going through a surgery that's likely not life-threatening for the child, but it's still, that it could happen, but it is life altering. Mm -hmm. Their life will be yes. different forever, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have surgery, it's not reversible, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something to consider. I think we're there where we have to talk about it, you know? So I know it, it really bothered me about, about the fact that they could only get Victoza, but as someone who has taken Victoza, and had success on it, not awesome success, but success, any of these medicines are a blessing. Like it's anybody that gets to take them ever is in a place of privilege, guys. It's, it's amazing you can get it at all mm -hmm. because of the cost. I mean, honestly, the cost is a barrier to entry for almost everybody. Right. You know? Right. Did you guys see that TikTok that just went around where someone said it cost them like $5 to make a vial? Oh, 
Even less than yeah. that. Dr. Jenna said. No. Oh, yeah, Dr. Wade Dock. Yeah. Wade Dock. I know Wade Dock is with Weight Watchers, but she is in a, she is in the circle of trust. But so. I think it's even like less than that. Yeah, they're but super. The yeah. amount of medicine is like cents. Like wow. underneath there that. Is, there is a counter argument to that though. Yeah, what and is it? Like, I've Tell seen me. these. I've seen these things about like, oh, you know, um, five guys you could buy a potato for a buck, but the, they sure. had to invest so much money. Yeah, right. Into developing these, mm -hmm. so not to the not to the degree of what the prices are. Yeah. No, but five dollars isn't the true cost of what it took them to make these meds because they're in the hole. Right. Yeah. They're rich beyond. You know. Sure. Odd, but business perspective only. Yeah, <laughs> we're trying to reap as much, and we did discuss that yeah. on the compound episode. I don't know if you saw this. So yeah. nineteen, I said, "Why is it so much less expensive?" And he was like, "Well, for two reasons. We don't have any of the research stuff that we're trying to make up, right? So what we charge for is what we charge for it." He's like, "And we also don't have to worry about the manufacturing and the pens. We just use files, yeah. right? Yeah. So pre predetermined, pre used, like all these different things, right? Yeah. So it is something to consider. That being said, why haven't things changed with sex and Victoza? when they lost their patent last year, but they're still charging $1,000 a month for their medication. Why hasn't someone done a generic if they lost their, lost their patent? They'll do it this year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. I think nobody's talking about it. I think it's going to be a huge on-ramp. I think yeah. it's like on-ramp for people. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and Eli Lilly has asked doctors not to write any more scripts for Trulicity. Because they want to yeah. use the pens. Because they want to use the pens. Oh, well. Mm. Right? They want to use the pens. It's the same effing pens. I can see my, I know my daddy's here. See daddy? <laughs> she said effing. I said effing. I'm getting there. Sorry, my daddy's very Southern. He's from Decatur, Georgia. He don't, we don't say those words. Anymore. Decatur where is greater. Okay. Decatur, <laughs> Georgia, sweet tea, biscuit loving man. Like, <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I'm from Louisiana and I cuss like a sailor and drunk and short. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help. Talk Live has taught me not to swear. Cause I, oh. I'm like, oh, the algorithm's gonna kill me if I say the F word right now. <laughs> Boom. That's why the algorithm kicks my ass on a daily basis. Cause like I'm F this and F that. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I'm my dad that. knows it's just it's cause I'm You gotta watch that. You gotta I love watch you, dad. That. Anyway, you listen to another clip. <laughs> you wanna do the other, the rest yeah. of the other one? Yeah. Okay, we'll do the other Maggie. This journey with her team of doctors that she has now the entire goal was to have bariatric surgery because we thought that was going to be, that the, would fix. be the, the, the answer. But the first appointment that we had with her doctors post-surgery, they looked at her charts and they said, this is not having the effect that we had hoped that it would. Maggie was one of the first teenagers in the country to be prescribed these medications. So what were you told were the risks if your daughter did take the Victoza and the risk if she did not? Well, the risk obviously of not taking the medicine and not trying to find another solution for her obesity was that she would become diabetic. Uh, she was already diagnosed with prediabetes and the fatty liver disease. And I had um, a healthcare professional at one point tell me that she would be 500 pounds by the time she was 16 and that she would die. I mean, just flat out, she will die young. Mm. So you're taking the Victoza, but you really want to be taking one of the other medications. But those yeah. other medications have not been... They're, they're not covered by insurance. We, can, we cannot afford them. Okay. I know that there are many people who are watching who think putting a minor on medications for weight loss is unthinkable or too risky. Uh, you've received a lot of criticism for that, you and your family. What do you want to say about that? I would say walk a mile in our shoes. You don't have any idea what it's like to live with obesity until you have. And you have no idea what it's like to raise a child who's suffering from a disease that you don't have access to the medicine for. Yeah. When did you know it was a disease? Did you get that memo in 2013? I did not. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. None of us did. <laughs> no. Another missed opportunity to talk about. I'm this. still looking for my email then. Still. Yeah. yeah, you know. It's in your yeah. spam, girl. It's in your spam. It's in the spam folder. Clearly. It's in the young folder. God, I mean, yeah. That's what I think, Janine, you said it earlier, like people, or maybe it was you, Lydia, that the people who criticize this, it's like, do you not believe, do you not think that we've tried everything? That we've mm -hmm. tried 
literally no. everything. No, get it. And for me, that woman, oh, I have said it any better when she said, walk a mile in my shoes. Exactly. And I will say that for each and every one of us on this panel and each and every one of us yep. in the chat, mm -hmm. that you right. have not walked two steps in my shoes to know the life I've lived, the things that I've tried, the things that didn't work, the things that were never going to work, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think if you're going to try to talk about, you should have some, if, if you're going to talk, you better have some experience. And if you don't have any experience, just be quiet. Exactly. So and it's like, like, when I started Ozempic, I said, you know what, 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 what do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I was like, you know, I've already tried everything else. I'll try this. And it yep. worked. And then I tried Manjaro and Manjaro worked even better. Yeah. So, yeah. As a mother, as a mother, right. Looking at your kid, seeing mm -hmm. that they have whatever it could, it could be anything. If it's within your power to help them, yeah. who the hell is someone else to judge? Yeah. That what I'm going to do for it could have been any kind of medical condition, but who the hell is anybody else to say anything about how what I'm going to try and do? I'm going to do anything within my power to help my kid. 100%. Yep. Yeah. 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 Anything. Yeah. I, and this and these medications, sorry, uh, I'm cold again. Um, <laughs> We're all cold. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm freezing. These, right uh, yeah. These, these medications, and you know, when. Maggie was saying that she was having a normal life. You know, now since more people are being vocal, we talked about that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you all are noticing, but in terms of the fat shaming, a lot of people, but especially men to women, that would fat shame women publicly mm -hmm. and like online. And now it's like, okay, well now what can you say? But they still like not they, but many still want to have something to nitpick. So now they nitpick and say, "Oh well, you're on Ozempic." So it's like the misogyny, the you know shaming. Yeah. It's like all wrapped into one. And I saw a post on Instagram, no, on TikTok, and I knew the young lady, and the guy was a gym bro, and he told her, "Well." you're, you know, still overweight according to BMI. Like he put that online and she's like, I've lost 55 pounds. I'm five, three and I'm a size eight. And he said, well, you just still need to work out. I mean, it's like the it's worst coming. in people are being revealed from these medications. And it's almost like Cat Williams said, this is the year of truth. I'm like, oh, okay. Goodness. That's like Jillian <laughs> he Michael said the time year of the dragon. It's the year of the Isn't dragon. That Isn't that funny? I don't know how like the GLP medications, like I feel in a way, like all these people that I've met, all of us here on the panel, yeah. everyone in the chat, it's made us better people. And it's made the outsiders mm -hmm. in some cases worse people. Isn't that weird? How yeah. Yeah. We're talking about that. But I have personally witnessed people. It have gone the other direction. I don't know people say it changed that, are, that become skinny, but forget themselves. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. Sometimes yeah. they forget where they came from. However, yeah. comma, I do see I do feel like the majority of the people are trying to do better and be better and help others. And I think yeah. true. Like, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'm I'm still waiting for Jillian Michaels to give her apology for us because yeah, right, right. it's like I don't think it's going to happen. Jillian, we Jillian, 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 down. Let me tell you, she's cheering. The white guy that Kim yeah. wants the apology from, or they're sitting at a bar together, like we right. don't do it. Criticize these medications. It's like, ma'am, aren't you the one that stars people for a living and screams at them? Like, is that what you Oh, the show you were a part of. Most of those people came on there saying they have metabolic yeah. damage now. Yes, they yeah. can't lose weight. They, they do. No, they're yeah, yeah. yeah. No, my big favorite we thing is having. We are going to have someone on our show that was on the Biggest Loser, though. <gasps> yeah, Ooh, that was my show, though. I can't was, lie about and that. And he actually won. JT, JT got it. JT got what? It. JT and do you remember? Also, he actually won the Biggest season. Loser, but also was Ooh. Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition. Oh, yes. That so infuriated yeah. me. They had a woman who had an eating disorder as one of their patients. And she had to lose, like, I think 50 pounds within, like, th you know, three months or whatever. I was like, how how are you? She's got BED. She's bulimic. And you're making, I was, yeah, that show infuriated me. Anyway. 
more so than a big affiliate. Affiliate. I never the watched fact, them. I couldn't watch them. The fact that she has a mental health podcast is oh, like gosh. Jack is like Jack Kevorkian working Oxy, a suicide prevention. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is insane. Oh, it is like the family family saying we're gonna start an opioid, you know, support group. Like, um, <laughs> ain't y'all the ones that started shit? <laughs> I'm just, I'm dying to know, like, who is watching her? Unless they're just, or is it just sort of like uh, all the people that oh, hate us? That's that's yes, that it's the people that hate us, Kim. That yeah. that's who's watching her. Yeah, it's the people that can't stand it. Individuals yeah. or people, her. That's what it is. Or people with a humiliation kink. Because I've mm -hmm. I've known some people like uh, I don't like you know like what? It, uh, videos. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. no, I don't. She want herself grew up with fat shame I, though. A humiliation yes, kink. She did. I, I and I think that. a lot of these people did. That's why they mm -hmm. they feel comfortable with her because they're like, oh, I yep. grew up with this, and this is I mean, what I. It is very yep. traumatic and trauma at a young age, especially yeah. it physically does something to the yep. brain. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like there's a lot of things like. I know I'm never going to get past. Mm -hmm. I know I won't, you know, yeah. and I know there are people who've been through way worse than me, you know, mm -hmm. but I think it's just about kind of recognizing and trying to do better, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and so I have another unpopular opinion. All right. So, oh, I love it. Hey, help me it Set it on fire, girl. <laughs> Why are you here? Tell us. So, and, and I really liked, again, so I am one of those people and I was actually at a board meeting today and we did like another type of um, disc assessment. So if you've ever done a disc assessment before, yeah. like it literally tells you about, I feel like it reaches into your soul and tells you everything about you that you never thought that you knew or you could bring to the surface. Like a fortune cookie. Um, but it, definitely do it. If you have not, go take yeah, one definitely. just for... Um, you say Kicks disc, right? whatever. D-I-S? Yeah, D-I-S-C, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And the thing about it is I really loved motivating people and watching them be a better them. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I liked it. That's why I liked it so much. Now, I didn't necessarily like um, the things that uh, Jillian Michaels was doing. I mean, I don't necessarily believe in yelling at people to make them do things, to make them run a mile that they were, you know, try to do when they were younger. But I felt as though, too, like when they finished, they were like, you know what? I couldn't do this before, even in gym class. Now mm -hmm. you allow me to be able to do it. And mm -hmm. I'm that person that's like, you know what? That touches me because now you're bettering yourself. And mm -hmm. so I feel as though... Um, and even in that moment as well, if you are trying to better yourself, then I'm going to reach you on. I'm going to, I feel like it's the same. It is the same way I feel about everything. And I just want them to be better. That's what I want for everybody, anybody yeah. and everybody. I just want to be that motivator and that person to say, you know what? Yeah. I just give your 2% today. Give yeah. your 2%. And I am glad that you gave that. That's yeah. it. But that's the thing about Jillian, though, is 2,000% was never enough for her. Never it was enough. Always, never you, enough. You are going to get off that treadmill when you die off of it. <laughs> yeah. This hurts. You think that you're yeah. never going to make it. You've got three more months of this hell, and you deserve it. Like, that I don't was care how you feel. I just want your ass smaller. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yep. three really, really I was always yeah. team Bob. Bob's team yeah. always has to win. Even though sometimes yeah. he did not, I was always for Bob because Bob was just, he was but even mellow. He, and he, he was just like, it. you know, he there was a guy who like fell off a treadmill and he like stepped on his belly and said, This is why you need to work out. Like, oh, well, yeah, book? yeah, I, I'm just like, This they all had their the moment. Ends do not justify the means. My for me. brain yeah. just did exactly what Kim said. She goes, The yeah. fuck? The <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what my brain did. Oh, what? Oh, for me, I mean, I, I still appreciate, I appreciate what Tiffany's saying. There is no way, and the only reason I even started to consider like anything with Weight Watchers at all is because if we, if we, if we're always in this, like I watch way too many cult things, but if we're always in this, I do too. Person, oh, we need to talk. But I watch way too many things. But if we're always in this us versus them, nothing's ever going to change. And it is very hard for me to get into a place to receive anything positive about Weight Watchers, mm -hmm. but I, I really try. Right. I really do. And I try to offer that space on the show. Can they advertise? No. But <laughs> you're this watching, is your show after all now. Okay. No. But that wasn't to you, boo. That was to them. But you know, like, no, they can't. But will are there certain things that I would consider 
Yeah. And it's not for any other part, but it's a piece of healing for everyone, mm-hmm. for everyone. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's something that I've learned doing this show and bringing us all these hurt souls in one place, right? Is it's, it's about us learning mm-hmm. and it's about, you know, the healing piece, but it's also about us growing to that next self. Right. And that is a journey and a process and any other thing that you want to like throw at it. But I mean, it's very important and it is very hard for me, but I am trying, <laughs> you know, and I do think that it's important. important for people to say those things. That being said, I do think sometimes you're going to hit a point with people. Jillian Michaels is like one of them where I'm kind of like, yeah, I ain't giving her any more attention. Like yeah. she ain't coming to the table with something better. Do you know what I'm saying? No, you got to no. actually come with yeah. something better, not just be no. like, Ooh, you know, that's it's just shame, yep. shame, shame. I've never that's liked her. I even I don't tolerate the season of the biggest loser. I was like, this woman is what the no. Like, and then what you said, Nick, about the guy putting his foot on his fat belly, my anger issues could never. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, I'm right. off the show because I'm about to be You're like, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going to tell you. Well, just call 911 because Bob has two black eyes. Right. What, are, what were they? They started like new trainers on afterward. I think Dolvet, he was cute. Was it Dolset, Dolvet? Oh, oh, yeah. Dolvet. With, mm-hmm. with the lady with the long hair, yeah. And then like the tennis Dolvet. player, they were nicer. They were a lot Much nicer. Much nicer. Dolvet talked Because like, he used to be in a kind. bigger body. Like, yeah, he was, he was, he was obese and she had been through everything and I felt like she had more um, she had more empathy than they did and that is really what you need in a um, in yeah. a trainer or really in anybody I feel yeah. like everybody should have an ounce if nothing at all of empathy of empathy you yes. got to and they I sold us down the river with that whole thing you go on the biggest loser and yeah. work out for eight hours a day and eat celery of course you're gonna lose a hundred and that's true. This was- I think the reality though of the Weight Watchers thing, like just like is that at the end of the day, it is a company that's been around 60 years and they are no longer relevant for the majority of people that struggle with with regain. Let's just let's keep it really no, simple. Not at all. No, regain keeps them in business, but you right? know like, they, 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 they are no longer relevant yeah. because of these medicines. And there it was mm-hmm. undeniable. If you look yeah. at their stocks, it's undeniable. There was no choice but to pivot or perish. Okay. Yeah. So from a business perspective, purely, and there were likely people with good intentions, right? Like there were probably in there. Certainly those people are not in charge of their marketing. I'll tell you that right. they are not, they are not, those people have no, it is clear the same people are in charge because it is, it is so, it is so out of touch. It is so out of touch. They're and trying. I, I hope they figure that. I hope that that's important. Doesn't they do better? And I hope they start targeting a different demographic because that's their that's going to be their best bet, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think that at some point they got to quit apologizing. They got to quit doing all the other stuff, and they just got to focus on like, hey, this is what we do. I don't know how they would change that because at the end of the day, they're still teaching people to count and track and restrict. Like that's still part of it, regardless if it's a medicine or not. Mm-hmm. Some people though feel like that they need that. I do think a lot of that goes back to because that's what we feel like we deserve. I think that's what we feel like we have to have. Like that's how we have to make work. That's me, my body, my life, and my stuff, right? And other people feel different. So if people want a Noom, if people want a Weight Watchers, if people want freaking Nutrisystem, if they feel like that's what they need with a combination of these medicines, then I think that it's great that you do that, you know? But at the end of the day, I do not think that there are just these warm, hugging, kissing people trying to make it. <laughs> yeah. There was no choice but to mm-hmm. pivot or perish. Like yeah. that, that's where their business was. They're not mm-hmm. saying we are the world with us. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's just where I sit with it. That's me, in my opinion, my stuff, you know. Do we have any more clips or are we done? Oh, no, yeah, we got some clips. We got some what do you want? We'll do a couple more. Oh, you know what? I, I, I really want to get everybody's reaction for Eli Lilly and Novo speaking together. Ooh, oh, especially yeah. at the shortage. Let's talk do about it. it. Let's, Let's roll it. Right. Let's roll the footage. footage. Yeah. Well, yo. Morris is a senior vice president for Novo Nordisk, the Danish company behind Ozempic and Wigovi. And Rhonda Pacheco is the group vice president for Eli Lilly, the American pharma company that manufactures and sells Manjaro and Zepbound. And they've been sitting together this entire (laughs) hour. I wanted to ask you, in the Novo Nordisk offices, when this hit TikTok 
and became like a sensation. What was going on back there? Uh, it was actually over two decades ago that Novo Nordisk made a stand that obesity is a disease and that the shame that society heaps on people who are dealing with excess weight and obesity needs to stop. And both of those things were equally important. And I'll say it over and over again as someone who still myself struggles with excess weight and obesity, I have to remind myself constantly, this is not a personal failing. Yes. Even surrounded by all this education and data and doing what I do for a living. And so can you both talk about access? First of all, running out of the drugs, I guess that's because the demand was so high, correct? Unprecedented demand. I think people are getting the memo like you're talking about. And people are really understanding, understanding that, this that this is a disease and they're seeing treatments, they're seeing treatments that are showing this are efficacy. Showing efficacy. And so they're going out and they're speaking to their physicians. And so it is unprecedented. It's also very... And there are a lot of physicians who are not informed about it. Correct. Yes. Correct. So we, the job's not done. And now after a show like this, you're going to have people debating it all over the place and people... But it's a healthy it. discourse, right? And I think that that's important to have that discussion. So access is complex, just like the disease itself is complex. Obesity medications are not covered to the same extent, and that's why that out-of-pocket cost is what it is. When you look at obesity, that it's nowhere near the coverage that we need. Well, I thank you both for being here the first time in a hundred (laughs) years. This is... Mm. They looked so uncomfortable sitting next to each other. (laughs) Didn't you really say (laughs) unprecedented? Twice. She did. She and said it twice. more than both those two times. She said it in another they clip. They trash. They've had oh, this yes, forever. Not unprecedented. 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 Those yeah. their prices are unprecedented compared to other countries Absolutely. too. So they are. That's how wild it is. Listen, somebody said that they looked uncomfortable. You know who looked uncomfortable? <laughs> Seema. If Sima. I was Amy Sima. sitting next to Seema, I'd yep. be like. <laughs> I, I would never. I couldn't. I. Uh, but I don't hate her. Like that's. I, you know. Like she's just I doing know. her job. Like, yeah. yeah. She's just I know, doing. But you don't yeah. know. You might be like, listen. I'm about to plan this exit because I. I don't, I'd, yeah. I'd let her come on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see you. Who was I before her? Because really cool. I was trying to figure out who was before like her Tony. though. The yeah. yeah, because I, I mean, and know. I and I always think about that. Like she, yeah. you know, that's why I say it's still like a lose lose. And you know, she's just mm-hmm. she's trying her best. I, I really, yeah. I believe. I mean, I believe everybody's trying their best until I they, do think it's a lose. They show me that they're for this not. generation. For, for I think anything, honestly, I think anything X going forward, anything yeah. gen X, anything or backwards. You know, really good. Yep. You know, like I mean, like I think I think it's a lost cause. You, you can't. Mm-hmm. You're not going to change minds at this point. Yeah. There's a different target audience and you should lean into that. And I think that's what the mm-hmm. GLP one house was kind of trying to do for some of the younger creators, like the ones that are on um, like Insta. There's a good bit of younger creators I saw that kind of mm-hmm. went over from Insta. And I think that was kind of the goal, right, is to kind of get and, and I don't think they have a lot of stuff. Yeah. I also think by the time a lot of the kids, I, I'm such an old lady. I think a lot of I think a lot they of were them, young, like yeah. millennials. Right. And and backward for I don't know how I'm thinking but I think they in general a lot of that super toxic stuff that we dealt with in the 80s and the 90s I think by then most of that was gone from Weight Watchers right like the Mm. really bad stuff that a lot of the people like dealt with and they weren't targeted as children and stuff like that you know so I think that a lot of that was gone so I think their experience is different like you were saying different their experience is different Mm -hmm. so that's your best shot if you want to survive but right now it's not going well you know so they're going to need to get whatever today's oprah is right i don't know you know um to, to to get on board if that's what they want and that person will have to lead and that person will have to actually show how they're using the glp version you know whatever with their how they're doing it like tracking it one by one they need to start from the beginning that's where they're at they keep yeah. trying to like make up time and solve solutions and yeah. all this crap and it's just not working let it go yeah, Come on. yeah. I agree. Somebody made a comment. Kat De Silva said something the way Oprah said, Monjero. <laughs> yeah, she probably did yeah. use the OG coupon. Yep. <laughs> oh, you know, Monjero. <laughs> yeah, she used the OG coupon. coupon I don't her. think that no. Oprah needed a coupon. You know, she's a billionaire. No, oh, it, but that's what Kat said. Multi-billionaire. Not for Kat, but yeah. yeah. I can see that. 
Manjaro. <laughs> you give me Jaro. You give me Jaro. Everybody gives me Jaro. That is the, like, watching it together, we were all hoping for that. All over TikTok. I know. <laughs> I know yeah. I was. Look mm -hmm. under your seat. Okay. Oh, the scream I would let out if she's like, look, there's a lifetime supply under that seat. You know, it's just yeah. like, yeah. like, oh, okay. Go. That's your coupon. Okay. You know, I would love it. Don't lose it. The terms and conditions won't change in 60 days. Because <laughs> 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 that's your what seat. they do. This look, is always subject to Under change. your seat, every dose. Yeah. Every every yeah, dose. One year. Yeah. Plus, look. Hey, man. Plus yeah. a refrigerator to yeah. keep it. Oh. <laughs> Your little okay. beverage refrigerator. Yeah. Do we yeah. have other so cool. um? Do we have other clips? We do. Want some more clips? A couple, yeah. more Let's do the. You want to do the bagel one? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. To have the other to be on the opposite side of the spectrum where food does not control your life. Yeah, it's interesting because. Like many of you totally. are listening, you, you know that I'm literally thinking about as I'm eating breakfast, what's for lunch, what, what's <laughs> going to have, what am I going to have for lunch? Yeah. Listen, and as Christmas is coming, what am I going to mm -hmm. eat then? Mm -hmm. And how much am I going to eat? And how much am I going to gain? Absolutely. The difference between for me being on the medication is now I can eat a half a bagel Absolutely. and be fine. Right. I, I, you mean if I go out to dinner and I order a dessert with my husband? But I still want the bagel. And, totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, like I don't want the bagel. Exactly. <laughs> I just want less of the bagel. Less of the and, and I think that's there's such a misconception around these medications that it makes you not want the bagel. Yes. Okay, so it's one of the last acceptable biases. First of all, what is the difference you feel in how people treat you in a smaller body versus being in an, in a bigger body? I am treated like a completely different human being. And now that I'm in a smaller body. I'm com I mean, people are friendlier. And, and this is the part that I really have, I struggle with, is that I find that people are nicer to my children when I'm out with my children, mm. right? I feel that that it's just like, in general, but... Mm. Mm. There's a lot to unpack in that. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think okay, Sabrina, Sabrina, Sabrina did an excellent work. job of representing the majority of people in the She community. did. I think she did a very good job. Yeah. I was very... Yeah, strong, Jay, young. Amy. Yeah, I was very yeah. curious eyed by it. I thought she did such a good job representing. I, I really did. I thought it was excellent. I, yeah. I don't. I would not have been able to keep myself composed as much as she was in front of Oprah. Oh, yeah. she, she was great. very articulate <laughs> and wonderful. I thought she did such a good job. And she even kind of leaned into the whole spectrum piece, like insulin resistance spectrum. I don't know if they just cut it or if she just, they wouldn't let her do it because she's not a doctor. Probably uh -huh. didn't most people in there. But, you know, all what we do, right? We're, we're, we're bathed in it the way we are on TikTok. And we're in this echo chamber where we hear about it all the time, you know? Um, but uh -huh. I do think that it's interesting what Oprah said was like, you guys weren't even thinking about the bagel. We couldn't stop. And I wonder, guys, like, I, and I'm oversimplifying, right? But I swear my body wanted the highest calorie things and they knew what equaled the highest calorie thing. I say they, like my brain, right? Like knew. They knew I wanted cake. They knew I wanted fries. They knew I wanted the bagel. They knew I wanted any because they thought they were starving all the time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah. having yeah. that stop. That's been the thing, right? Yeah. And I feel like that's why when oh I tell you, I can see the moment in Oprah, like where she's like, this hey. is the way, yeah. this is the thing, right? And then you become a GLP-1 evangelist, you know, but I think that's why I see like a lot of these other creators, right? That are, that are talking about like, um, you know, being on these medications and body positivity and staying away from it and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's one, cause like I said, because of age. And I think it's, it's two, they haven't, they haven't felt it. You know, but Oprah got it. You know, yep. there's yeah. anybody that needed to get it. This was the one. This was the one. That was the I one. I just need to try it. If you try it, you tell me it's straight trash. I'll be like, you do whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> just whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Then I get culty. That gets really culty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but I think there's something to it. Um, I, really, cult. <laughs> I really do think that there's something to it. I think that. Um, I mean, I'm the same way you are. I tell everybody that I. Who's even not even willing to listen to it? You know, I'm like, yeah. no, listen, listen, you know, and they're yeah. like, no, I'm good. Yeah. So I, I feel like everyone should try it. But um, I just want to touch base on what Amy said in her clip about um, 
the difference, right? Like she's been on both ends of the spectrum. So have I. I've been on mm -hmm. very extreme ends. I, I, I mean, my lowest was like 125 and the highest was like three to over 320. So mm -hmm. there is 100%. There is a difference in the way you are treated and the just existing in life. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it, it just, it is, it's mind boggling how different pe people treat you and your children. So when she said that, I had immediately lost it because I know exactly what she's talking about. Yeah. You know, it's um, it going to a restaurant when I was in a larger body, people oh. would watch what I was eating. They would watch me eat. That's mm. that doesn't happen when you're in a smaller body. They'd watch mm. what you were eating, how much you were eating, how, how many times you were filling up your plate or whatever the case is like, yeah. I can't even go into the differences that you experience when you're in a bigger body versus a smaller body. And it's, it's heartbreaking. It really truly is. I experience a bit of a difference, but I'm still in a big body. So I'm like, Kim, like I have a lot to lose. Like I'm still in a big body, you know? And, but I do notice the attention of men and the attention of here's a coupon and a discount you didn't ask for. And just stuff like that does kind of blow my mind. This sounds weird, but like people letting me into traffic, Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, if it's a man wow. and I, the, the amount of people, I don't have to like nose my way to try. I'm not invisible anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, I notice those kinds of things, but it's never been to like the extent to like, like I'm treated so much, but I'm also, again, like I'm not in it in like a tiny body, you know? So As I your friend, though, I feel like I have to say that we all re recognize that you're in a much smaller body than you're giving your body credit for. Oh, I recognize that. I'm just saying like from, from a society like America, like I, a 14 is not small, right? It's mm -hmm. not it's like 14, 16. That is plus size. And I, I very much like it, actually. I, I think it's great. Like, I wish I didn't have the skin because it's uncomfortable and health stuff, but um, I'd be okay with this. I really would be. I mean, I, I mean, I'm still, like you said, I saw, I do still have a lot to, to lose, but I've same I've same. had I've had people and co-workers that are, are saying, oh, uh-oh, you sound Try again. Go ahead. Try again. I was, I was saying like I I was I have coworkers that mm -hmm. every single day they're like you can uh, we really see you losing. I'm like, you know, I'm coming here in new dresses with my hair looking good, my nails looking good, and y'all never compliment me for anything. Mm -hmm. The minute I start dropping some pounds, mm -hmm. every single day someone has to mention how much weight I've lost, and they could really. Uh -huh. see it. It's not, and it's not that I don't appreciate the compliments. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting how in society we put some sort of like success. We like we 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 celebrate people who are losing weight, but it's like, but when they're looking nice and they're happy just being in their own body, it's like, no, that's not good enough. We need to see you losing the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So. And they tell themselves that it's because they want you healthy. And maybe some right. people do. Like I do feel like my parents wanted that. But I also had sisters that were in small bodies and they were very active cheerleaders, dancers, these kinds of things. And I was not. And I, I do, they did treat them different and they did seem more proud of them. You know, mm -hmm. now that could easily have been my shit. You know what I mean? I think right. they loved me and were very proud of me for all the things I did in my own. Right. I felt that from them and they gave that to me, but even from them, it was different. You know, it was mm -hmm. different. It was. I, I saw them. I saw him, my dad being proud of my sisters that were able to wear little shorts and bounce and do cartwheels and all of these crazy things. And I was lucky if I wasn't getting chub rub, frankly, anywhere we went, you know? So, yeah, you know what I mean? Everybody knows. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I have a stick. I have a stick called chub rub. I still use it. Ah! You know, the shape uh -huh. is real, honey. <laughs> Yeah. Especially when you're on vacation somewhere hot. Zip, 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 zip. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> For sure. No. I think there is a huge piece that like, I'm wondering, I think that they missed, but again, this is only episode one for God's sakes. You know, she is Oprah, but she's not, you know, I mean, she is. Yeah. But, you know, the piece of being able to forgive yourself for yeah. all the emotional and mental abuse that you gave yourself in response to being in a bigger body and dealing with issues with food. Yeah. That piece, it's just. We have a clip for that. Huge. Ah, great. Let's play it. 
<laughs> I'm looking all in the comments. Okay, you do. You <laughs> the whole one. One. The comments, JT. The rest of your <laughs> life, are hope. it's Oprah and hope and letting go, right? Hope right. One, yeah. mm -hmm. But the but but the mindset that she needs to love it along with it is just like beyond. And I think that happened. You tell us why that happened. That you're able to show up. I think that's. I'm going to cry too. Yeah. Now we cannot start to cry. Like, what? No. Where is no. coming from? The, I, I think the reason that happens is because there is now a sense of hope. Number one, and number two, you no longer blame yourself. Yeah. Because when I tell you how many times I have blamed myself because yeah. you think I'm smart enough to figure this out. Yeah. And then to hear all along, it's you fighting your brain. That yeah. guilt that you feel where you blame yourself. Yeah. It's twofold when you're the mom. Yeah. And that's why when you said knowing the right way to support your child hit my heart because there are people who criticize what we have done for our daughter because I had to weigh that, like, how do I treat her to love herself exactly as she is right now yep. and still support her desire to be in a different body? Yep, that's wonderful. Okay, so I recently made the decision to not continue serving on the... Oh. Mm. I really liked seeing yeah. you honestly get emotional. That was a big thing for me. It was. Yeah. I remember the first time I was on the show, like, that was one of the things I had brought up with me when I first started noticing that I'm not just losing weight, there's things that are coming back to my life that I miss that, cause I, I used to play sports. I mean, I've always been bigger, but mm -hmm. I wasn't like this big yeah. where, I, where I, I can't fit into seats and stuff like that. And I started seeing these little things in this, this past fall, like we went to this one movie theater and I realized I could fit in the seats. It was one of those dinner theater things. And I'm like, whoa, I couldn't fit in these seats five years ago. Now I can. Um, walking around, when I walked around with my husband around Costco and we were walking around uh, Wegmans and everything. And I realized I wasn't out of breath. I didn't have to sit down anymore. Mm -hmm. And when I was telling a friend later on about it, and then I started crying because I was like, we're planning this big Europe trip. And I remember saying, there's no way I can go around walking as I am because right now, like in our, in our life with me being the obese one, my husband's always thinking, you know, how far away do I have to park for her? Do I need to drop her off at the door? He's always very um, caring in that way, but it was embarrassing for me for so long. Cause I'm like, this man loves to go walking. He loves to go exploring and he can't do that with the fat wife. Yeah. When I started seeing that I was regaining that ability to do those things, it was like, my mind was blown. I was like, this is what I've wanted. I don't, I don't care about cute clothes anymore. I don't care about being skinny mini. I care about having my, oh, don't you dare girl. Get it. I get you. <laughs> ah! I get it. I get it. Come on. It. It's, it's okay. uh, Oprah said that we can't start crying right now. Come on, right. we can't. Yeah. Yeah. Ernie yeah. just doesn't cry, Kim. You do what you yeah. do. Because <laughs> that was the moment. That was the I moment. Cry. Yeah. But like, it was the moment for me because I'm like, my life is coming back. This is what I needed. I needed the freedom, the liberty. Because for so long, for so many years, the last several years, I've been a prisoner in my own body. Mm. You know, when one when the girl Rosie Beam said that she realized her her rock bottom was when she realized she couldn't wipe her own ass. And mm. some people take kind of take that for granted. Like it's so oh yes. blah, blah, blah. but it's like, but then you get to a certain point. Like look at my 600 pound life where mm. you can't fit into a shower. You can't fit into a regular seat. You mm -hmm. have to, you know, whisper to the flight attendant for a seatbelt extender and stuff like that. And when I start seeing that those things that I felt ashamed of, those things that I was, you know, kind of cut off from in life, mm -hmm. I'm able to participate in that li in life again. I'm like, yeah. this is working. This is like, I, you know, this is what I wanted. I don't care about being skinny. I just care about being healthy. I care about being able to do fun things with my husband. I want to wear cute, well, I do want to wear, wear cute lingerie, so. <laughs> Sure. But isn't that what Dr. Fatima was talking about oh, in the yeah. first Oprah special, where she was like, she doesn't give her clients a goal weight. Oh, wait, no. goal weight yep. She mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. ask you, what do you want to do 
and like what age and and then they just kind of go I kind of like the ebb and the flow but I'm glad that that. Oprah had that mother and daughter back Mm -hmm. on because remember the last special that mother was she was a little hesitant and she Mm -hmm. was against it and then she saw Mm -hmm. the light bulb moment she saw What does Oprah call them? Aha moments. TD. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that made me cry because seeing the, her daughter, the transformation just from that, like mm. last fall mm-hmm. to now. And I think that's why many of us who've been in the community in this time next year, mm-hmm. those that will be in the community, like on when we get those on this day post. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I Those are I now purposely right try to repost yeah. them. Yeah, because like we talked about when Weight Watchers bought Sequence, that made national news. It was on Good Morning America. Mm-hmm. We yes, talked it about it, and it's and I mean, and the and the evolution. So it was just really good to see that mother and daughter there. And they were dressed alike, and you did a really good job of like keeping things full circle. And like, I think so. Even ones that maybe like not our agreement, like, and I think that she'll do more and more, and like dig into like you know naysayers and such. You know, do you I think, think she'll, she'll do more? I do think she'll do more. She said yeah. on the after show, on the yeah. and the answer is yes. I mean, like, yep. she yep. is the one that's in a place to help change things. Like I just got a little podcast. She Oprah, you know what I'm saying? Do you think that this will bring her back into like pseudo talk show? No, I think she'll just do special. Uh, She's 70 years old. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, she looks good. Oprah works when she wants to. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. But I think even doing two and and starting the conversation, I I think that she'll continue it. I've not, she's not not one to quit, you know? Mm -hmm. It's one thing she said and I, I don't know if we have a clip of it, but she said she was sort of alluding to the fact that she was a very successful person, but she couldn't control mm-hmm. this. And I how that made her so bad, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I for sure have had that in my life. I for sure have been like a career and friends and all the things. And I, and oh, she's beautiful, all it, right? But I couldn't control. Oh, Brian, Ooh. thank you. Well, Brian, thank, thank you so you much for Brian. our membership, friend. Oh, Brian from oh, Chicago. Thank you, Brian. Brian, thank you. And we appreciate also, that. That really helps us. And, and and also, Nick, I'm not sure if anyone else noticed the shirt that you have on, but I just noticed it. Oh, yeah. Does that bear? Yeah. And um, I think it's really <laughs> cute. And I, love I would it. love to you know where you shop? got it. Um, I designed it. <gasps> but it is it is on Redbubble. Just search Zep Bear okay. and That's you'll find it. it. Yeah. I don't even know what Redbubble is. It's like a Shopify. It's, yeah, it's a, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. Is it like Etsy? Yeah. Sort of, but yeah. like t-shirts and stuff. Print on demand, oh. I think. It's, yeah. Listen, yeah. I love a good statement. Tea, honey. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I love you. Good statement. We have any tea. more um, clips? I can't remember. We got one more. Yes, we do. The rest one of your more. life. The rest of your life. <laughs> and do you have to be on it for the rest of your life? Yeah, the data would support that. I mean, we have good trials showing that when these patients stop the medication, the disease comes back. Both of you are consultants to the drug companies. What does that mean? What that means is that they're looking for our expert opinion to be able to deliver high quality care to patients. You know, I've been involved with uh, some of these companies in developing educational programs and modules for medical students and medical trainees to learn more about the disease of obesity. Right. I'm just saying, um, yeah, I think it's <laughs> Look, interesting. I mean, you know, take the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, I got to take Synthroid the rest of my life. So but like, the thing is, is I, I, she is right. That's what the doctors have taught us on the show is that the data does support mm-hmm. that it is a chronic disease. But again, like the doctors aren't necessarily like, I think they keep talking. It's driving the shit out of me. These doctors need a marketing consultant or a PR person or someone to go the way you're saying it to the average person with an, I don't know, average eighth grade education is not going to land. Like 
yeah. break it down and Did like anyone else feel like they didn't I, like these two doctors they were not nearly as relatable as the doctors that she had on the first special yeah, like, I, I agree, agree. Oh. yeah I agree. On this special were like this they kind of had their nose up a little bit and like i'm educated they I'm were telling stiff. All these yeah. things, but i'm i'm not gonna i don't relate to you in any way at all you're, you're not right. relatable yeah i agree the, really you know, you know. i did not think that they were misinformed um no. i didn't think i definitely think that they shared things that we've learned from the doctors on the show from many many experts um it does seem to align so i was happy about that and so the fact that no one started that conversation at rinsler resistance when you had obesity specialist on a show blew my mind it really did and it was a miss yeah yeah so he, I, he, Dr. Velasquez, mm -hmm. though, I actually know someone that works in her department at Cedars mm -hmm. and I've heard good things. Mm -hmm. And to Cedars, like on their website, they had this statement that I still use as kind of my motto whenever I can, which is excess weight is not due to a character flaw or lack of willpower. Mm -hmm. And actually reading that from Cedars was like the first crack that opened for me that it's like, oh, this yeah. isn't, a, you know, you don't have to hate yourself to lose weight because it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I come from like knowing kind of what I know of her secondhand, mm -hmm. I give her some credit. I mm -hmm. fully agree though, a PR person may have helped yeah. you know, yeah. those statements be crafted better. Mm -hmm. But I think that I I think I she think they're being thrust and like obesity yeah. specials are being thrust into the limelight. And I do think they have responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to communicate, it's very different than talk talking to a patient, right? Yeah. It's, it's very different than it is. And talking to us on TikTok, who we hear this, you know, every day, all day, you know, it's very different than when you're talking to America, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're full of different levels of experience and education and, uh, you know, right. and it, I think it, I think there's an opportunity there that Oprah can work through that, you know, um, she certainly has all the people in place, but I think that. <laughs> Honestly, guys, if she if they were just talk to some TikTok creators, clearly they already are, right? Yeah. Well, they're, they're in lives. lives. What lands? Or they could just go and look for God's sakes. Come to jump on our lives. Mm -hmm. Hear what lands. Hear what lands. We try different things all the time because all we want to do is help. Because when you've been sick your whole life or for a very, very long time, and then all of a sudden you're better, you want to throw away your crutches and do a little dance. You know, and that's mm -hmm. what's happening, right? Like it's we just want more people yeah, to know. Yeah. We just want more people to know. That's but they yeah. do hop in our lives. The media yeah. is in our lives. Sure. The media Everybody hops is in. scouring mm -hmm. TikTok. They're lurking. Yeah. They and mentioned it. They said they we needed lurking. TikTok yep. yes. on the special. And, yeah. And, yeah. And we've been saying this, Lydia, Kat, myself, and then Sabrina, we've been telling the community, be Ooh, cognizant what you post because the media is is all over. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. everywhere. The literal great big brother. They're everywhere. And they're yeah. scouring our pages. Mm -hmm. And they will even email you. Kim, Kim knows. And I, I had a major media outlet, news outlet approach me last week. I was on the phone with mm -hmm. Kim and the email popped up. Mm -hmm. I said, whoa. And they even had the video. Mm. And mind you, I posted this almost two months ago. Mm -hmm. They They're had the behind. link. They're lurking. Yeah. They're lurking. They like the around like the new desk or, you know, the assignment desk and all that stuff. Yeah, it gets, mm -hmm. stuff gets passed around. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys, they got to show it to like your news director, your news person. So. Right. I, mean, I got interviewed by GoodRx um, a couple months back. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I saw your post. I was like, yeah. Yes. yeah it just came out. Um this week, last week, I can't remember. Yeah. Every, days are running together, but they're very, I've noticed like with them, they're very good at, you know, destigmatizing these medications and showing this is how it's helping people. Yeah. Like they are big cheerleaders over there of GLP ones. And that's a good thing. Awesome. Um, so I love that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, and, yeah. and, 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 you just don't know who's who who pops up in your lives. You really yeah. don't, or even if they lurk on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I can actually usually tell when it's someone in media asking me the question. They ask mm -hmm. they ask me like they're interviewing me. And of course, like they're not gonna credit. But aren't you sure it's like help someone? I don't I don't care. Love it. As long Love as it, it helps somebody, I don't care. Yeah. You know, but what yeah. if it's the fifth Elon Musk that it's it's oh the Elon Musk? I know. He's been trying to reach me. 
I there's hear so many. You. Him and Keanu Reeves. The oh, okay. um, and Keanu. Oh, that's God. right. Listen, I keep getting Keanu has like eleven different profiles, and they all have different <laughs> pictures. And he, every single eleven personalities of Keanu Reeves, all want to be my sugar daddy. I'm like, <laughs> right, <"Let's laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we'll talk. You're like, like get in line, because you know what, my dear, my dear. I did have a slide. I got slide into my DMs a few months ago offering to be my sugar daddy and he was dead set serious and i was like i told my husband and i was like look at this this is stupid he goes i'm sorry how much is he offering you <laughs> <laughs> will it pay for the manjaro <laughs> yeah, it's it's for it's it's for right, i'll put you on loan it's fine okay <laughs> Okay. I just okay. want pictures, and I, you know, he's like, all he wants is pictures. And I'm like, ah, ah but sir, <laughs> no, we are married. Well, I know we've been on quite a while, and we could probably go forever. I like to Jerry Springer it at the end and say, like, does anybody have any final thoughts that they would like to share? I do. What is I, it? I just want to um, quickly say that um, I have healed so much because of the podcast. I, I had a lot of hurt, a lot of trauma, a lot of anger and shame. And this podcast has changed my life. So I feel like um, you guys deserve the flowers. You, you guys deserve all the flowers. And I just want to say- about you guys, you're on this team. Yeah, you're <laughs> on it. We're right right on this team. But, okay. But- <laughs> This this podcast has learning, right? Like what Oprah was talking about, mm -hmm. the shame and it's my fault and all of that. I have released that because of this podcast. So thank you to everyone. Thank, thank you. you. We have exercised. I feel the same. I feel the, same. <laughs> the last couple of weeks have been really rough with my mom getting, yeah. you know, saying the cancer's back and everything. It's like the never ending going to the hospital, she's discharged, going back in and then constantly worrying. It's like, I, I hold a lot of things very close to the vest. I had, I just told my closest friends today that her cancer was back and it's been over two weeks this has been happening. Mm -hmm. And this show tonight was like the bright spot of the last two weeks for me Good. because like I said, it's been really yeah. rough. <laughs> We're so glad to have you here. And you had so many amazing contributions tonight. I've about lost it at least three times. Like, like yeah. the plate thing. Oh my God, Kim. I was like, suck your tears up, bitch. Like I was just like, I can't <laughs> like, you know, like your contributions are so important. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I need to, I do need to probably put that on a, on a t-shirt. Someone said, put it on a t-shirt. You know what? Right. I don't have to. Yeah. Put on a t-shirt. Yeah. Well, yeah. What was it called again? Red um, bubble. Kim's going to put it on the red bubble. Yep. Say no the longer the to the plate. Okay. Do you have a Maljaro like pseudo T-shirt, or is it just the Zeffy? You know what? This is, one. this is this is my first endeavor. Chair. Let's talk. Let's talk. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Let's talk. I might want to do that prisoner to the plate thing. You know, I'm, I'm yep. okay. Mm -hmm. right. hey. You should design it. Design mm -hmm. it. I'm, I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna I steal. Think, what Nick, Kim I think you have to explain to Janine what a bear is before she tries to wear the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know what? I think I should. Look at her face. I should, oh, yeah. So I, I think I should do a full talk about it. We, yes. um, uh, does anyone here know what an otter is? Yes. The well, animal. The I know animal. what a bear in the gay we, community we, is. We thought, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. That's what. So we, we taught, no. or mm -hmm. I guess, we, I, as a group, taught Cena what an otter was. And, mm -hmm. um, that was, that was like yeah, I'm still a little confused, Where? but I wasn't gonna tell them that. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Cena yeah, okay. didn't know what an otter is. No, no, no. not the animal, Journey. Not, the, not animal. the animal. Not the animal, baby. It wasn't that animal? An animal is a, or a, an otter is a skinny bear. It's someone who's hairy but is not large. I've never oh, heard that term before. Let's, otter. Yeah, let's let's take this off. Oh, a no. skinny bear. Educating oh. anywhere I can. I think you can make a TikTok series about this, Nick. This is your next opportunity. Let us let us that is like, like a skinny fire bear. Get all wow. the oh. yeah. Yeah. Wow. I can see the stitches of duets. But it's gonna happen, man. <laughs> I learned something new every day. Yeah. Out of the bus. She said I was just gonna let her wear the shirt. She wasn't gonna. Uh -oh. <laughs> hey, I, listen. I would be like, hey. 
I, sure. just I like it. Is that bear? So, I like it. JT be like, whatever. I don't give a shit. Look, like, hey, it's cute. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, May. I, that's what I'm talking about. Old. I mean, now, yeah. and can I just say thank you to each and every one of you all. And I'm, I'm like Kim when I started this medication. I'm kind of glad that I was super green because I probably would have overthought it and I wouldn't have started. Yeah. And but I had just gotten to rock bottom and I said, what, what else do I have to lose? I mean, yeah. it can only go up from here in terms of my health. I'm like, good God. Mm -hmm. I was, I didn't realize how much inflammation I had in my body. I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. And this community, this, you know, podcast has just been a lifesaver. It has been a lifesaver. And I talk to you all more than I talk to my trifling family sometimes. I'm like, <laughs> I definitely do. My family's like, yeah, where no. are you? <laughs> right. I'm like, I have a million businesses. <laughs> I got a million jobs. You were such a great question. I tried to change the world. No, she said that was part of the placement. She was like, I have a million businesses. I support them. Right. I was trying to show off my ring earlier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this one. Oh, my oh. God. Okay. I'm just saying. No, when you get a ring from the boss party. Therapy. It's eventually going to go to the podcast. So I'm working on it. It ain't there yet. It's still in a deficit. But, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> you just support the podcast along with this and other things that you do. If you go through a plus size water bottle that's in the corner. It's a podcast. Thank you. <laughs> do you now have this? I want to make a link in bio. Yes. <laughs> in my link tree. I have the link there in my in bio. My link too. Tree. In the, the link of the tree. In the show mm. notes. I wonder one of them. I've been thinking, like, okay, I got too many Stanleys. Do I really need another one? Definitely need another yeah. one. Yes, yes, always get a plus size yeah. baseball cap. Like, I have. Um, a t-shirt tank. Yeah. yeah. I gotta wrap off, guys. I just wanted to say thank you so much. It's been a, thank you for coming on. Everybody, I appreciate you coming on so much and sharing your perspective. And Tiffany, thank you for being brave and I have to share things that you knew may not be popular. It's very important that we hear all sides. So mm -hmm. thank you. Of course. Yes. And I appreciate your light very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You're a doll. Thank you all for coming on. I appreciate I know, it. That's, look, that's why I have to go to bed because now mm -hmm. I've got to get up at like 6 a.m. Yeah. Go I do the laughs. So, yeah. I'm, I'm an early morning girl too, girl. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. No, we I'm need our beauty like, sleep. I we got to go to bed. Pee. We need it. I need my cream and my beauty sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cream. All right, everybody. Let's night, roll guys. the credits and we will see you guys next week. Thank you. Are you interested in understanding GOP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, or Manjaro? Then join us on the plus side, Cracking the Obesity Code, the groundbreaking podcast helping people change their lives one episode at a time. The Plus Sides podcast is a disruptor. We're breaking down barriers, smashing stereotypes, and sharing inspiring stories that'll leave you feeling informed and empowered. Join us every week to learn from doctors who are specialists around GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovia, and Manjaro. They'll provide you with science and facts to validate these incredible stories. But that's not all. We'll also bring you the voices of the GLP-1 Manjaro TikTok community, real people who face the challenges of obesity, related diseases and disorders, and discovered the incredible plus sides of GLP-1 medications. Our episodes are filled with heartwarming stories, laughter, and moments of triumph. You'll connect with our amazing community members who are reclaiming their health and experiencing their fullest lives. Are you ready to embark on a journey of discovery and empowerment? Tune in to The Plus Sides, Cracking the Obesity Code, and together we'll change the narrative around obesity and end the stigma. Subscribe now on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform and join our incredible community. Let's celebrate the plus sides of life together because every story deserves to be heard. Every life deserves to shine, and everyone deserves access to expert knowledge and medication. The Plus Sides Podcast. You're not alone. It's not your fault. 
Good night. Good night, ladies.